All right, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Frober. Today we have my good friend Ricky Patterson on the podcast. How are you doing, my brother? Doing great, doing great. I'm glad to hear it, man. What you been up to these last couple of months of fucking chaos we've been dealing with? Uh, I moved. And it was nice that there was nobody on the road to move. <laughs> oh, yeah, right? <laughs> Coming through the spaghetti bowl was pretty easy. Uh, it has been great, man. The so. traffic being dead is uh, its a blessing. I love yeah. driving around. Uh, we, we, been, we went on a little uh, road trip as well, and there's just fucking nobody on the on the road at all, man. Oh, I know. I can't wait. We're getting ready to go on one ourselves. So Yeah, where are you guys going? We're going to head up north around uh, Idaho, Oregon, Washington borders. I love that north. stuff. Yeah, it's a, there's some nice rivers and camping up there, so. Oh, yeah. And it's cooler. <laughs> yeah, especially Idaho. Yeah. Yeah, I spent, uh, I spent a summer up on, uh, well, it was just like a week in the summer when I was a teenager up in a mountain in Idaho, and that big lake up there and shit. My family's up in Idaho, uh, uh, my uncle. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's beautiful, man. Gorgeous up there. Yeah, nope. So many trees, and the fucking air is just delicious, man. You know, when you get out of the desert, and like you can breathe like that humidity in the air. Oh yeah. Oh my god, it's so nice. No, I've spent the la I spent four years up in Oregon. It's just yeah. It's way different than this. There's, you know, pros and cons both. Yeah. You know what I mean. Oh, big time. This is for me because I was born and raised here. This is uh, the time that I hibernate <laughs> or I leave because <laughs> the heat. Yeah, it's you know triple digits for the next four months. Not 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 the best thing. Yeah, that's probably a good call on your part, man. Like, I, I try to get out as well, but I, I don't usually get out for the whole summer. Well, I, at least two months, you know. I mean, working working out of the hall, our, our work usually dies July and August. Yeah. So I'm like, no problem. I'll take those months off. I'll survive and hit it strong back in September. So hopefully that's what's going to happen even after this uh, little pause we took. <laughs> yeah, pause for the cause. It was kind of a good way to reset and try to figure out priorities a little bit, right? Yeah. You know? I think you're kind of a guy that already had his shit figured out pretty well, but for the rest of us, we're kind of lost in our I just worlds. I I uh, I just look at the whole thing and look at the the facts, and I don't uh, I don't watch TV or the news every day, so that stuff doesn't affect my life. Yeah. And. So when all this stuff started changing around me, I like, okay, and let me see what the hell's going on here. <laughs> and, and so then I do my own research. I don't just take it for face value what the news says, you know? Yeah. And go out and I was like, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not buying into it. <laughs> so we moved on, you know, and other than no work and less money than what I'm used to. Yeah. Life has been good. Yeah. I have to say. Life has been pretty good as well, man. Like it's, uh, it was crazy at first, but I, I'm feeling good, man. Yeah, no, like I say, we moved at the beginning of it, so it was like, okay, kind of chaos going on. Yeah, during we were just kind of, and now chaos. There's time. even more chaos, and you don't even want to go out. You know, you're, you're, you can go out all of a sudden, but <laughs> do I want to go out there where they're burning and looting? No, I don't want to be part of that. So, yeah, you know, but, so we'll go to the mountains. Ain't nobody out there burning and looting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good call, man. Yeah. No, we just got back from uh, from Arizona. It was gorgeous up yeah, there. You showed me those pictures. They were pretty awesome. Yeah, it was beautiful, man. Yeah. Uh, freaking forest out there, ferns everywhere. We went uh, stayed on the uh, edge of this cliff overlooking, I think it was like two cities. It's such a wide, spread out view. Right. But uh, yeah, uh, they I guess they call it the end of the world or something like that because you got to go like 25 miles deep into okay. the forest wow. and then uh all of a sudden it's this huge clearing and that those pictures i was showing you the fucking cliffs out there and everything it was fucking beautiful i don't man. know if i've been to that spot i've been a lot of places out there but uh don't know if i've been to that particular spot that you guys went to oh yeah but uh yeah i wanted to take diane out that way we want to go to antelope canyon page and lake powell then down through grand canyon north rim and then into zion but she, she said I'd rather go where it's cooler. <laughs> <laughs> it is hot, man. Yes, yes. I mean, we got cooked. The whole, the way home, I was fucking, like, hiding my arm from the, the sun coming in the window, man. I was <laughs> yeah, like, Put God. a long sleeve shirt on on one side. <laughs> yeah, man. I was just like, oh, damn, dude. It is. I know. It's because you don't want to wear the long sleeve the whole time, but it's like at the same time, my arm is turning fucking red. Nope. So, yeah. We did a 400-mile motorcycle ride a few weeks ago. and. Oh, uh, damn. We went uh, up through Pioche, and out of Pioche, we went across into Utah. And then I have a cabin up in Central, 
little town and we hit the cabin and then uh coming back down we instead of hitting through st george and on i-15 we went and through the gorge we bypassed the gorge and came out there by beaver oh, okay off the 15 and did that but uh i didn't have any sunscreen and it was kind of co- cool on part of the rides because this was a few weeks ago before it started getting really warm here and uh it was kind of chilly and by the end man my face was just burnt and this one arm was just burnt <laughs> ah, ah. And i'm like oh <sighs> took me a few days to recover the can of bomb came in good Cannibal. Oh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. I'll probably try to get my hands on some of that. I can Angela's back still is hurting, man. You know, okay. she got she got cooked pretty good. Yeah, but it, it works great on 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 burns. Yeah, it works great on cuts. It work great works great on sore muscles oh. and and sore joints. So I need I, to get me a jar. Yeah. I thought you had one. <laughs> no, I don't, man. I've actually been kind of backing off all the fucking bud, man. Right. I'm, I'm working towards getting on that. Uh, remember in October when I was all doing the uh, sober October thing? Right. I'm kind of trying to do another one of those just kind of midway through the year, and I'll do it again in October as well. Yeah. I kind of felt really good about th- no. that. You know, Taking a break is n- yeah. never an issue. You know, I've, I've taken a few in my life, but, you know, here I am 60. Yeah. And I started... Uh, Smoking marijuana in 1970, so nice. 50 years ago. That's uh, so. <laughs> oh, what was the what was the weed like in the 70s compared to like now, man? Because I um, remember even when I was growing up smoking weed, which was like the I guess the early 2000s. I'm a fucking kid, right? Uh, but yeah, it was like even that was pretty shitty. But we still had, we still were getting well, some there beautiful sh- nugs every once in a while. There was sh- it was shitty weed. To the for the most part, but there were some strains that you would get every once in a while back then, and some of those you can't get now. Yeah. Um, I mean, tie stick. I was about to say tie stick. Tie stick was phenomenal. I mean, uh, to this day, I'll I'll put it up against most anything, you know. But oh, wow. if you're getting the same stuff that we were getting in the '70s, um, honey oil back then was just as it is today. You know, the concentrates, the concentrate. So. They had it down even back in the 70s. It just was a different process that they do today. There's so many different processes. And, you know, I like the I like the clean organic one. Yeah. You get the keef and press it, heat press it, and there's no solvents, you know. Back then they were using butane, so. Oh, yeah. I've had the, the butane mix that, like, I won't even smoke it now. You can yeah. tell. It's like it just looks like fucking black tar. And you're well, that's, like, well, no, but you can refine that black into, yeah. into gold. Can you still oh, refine yeah. it? Oh, yes. yes if you use CO2? Yeah. Well, you can do it in all different ways besides CO2. CO2 on a closed system is what most people are doing, but yeah. that's the, the big new corporations who can afford those right. seventy eighty thousand dollars $80,000 machines to, <laughs> to do that. Me, I can I can make a press. Oh, yeah, you do the press. Yeah, so I do the heat press. you smash it. Yeah, yeah. okay. I, I, at about 200 degrees. Okay. And uh, the oil just drips out onto the parchment paper and... You collect it off the paper, and away you go. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful, man. No, it's, a, it's a process. After after owning the farm up there in Oregon, it was you learned quite a bit. Yeah. You know, when you're looking at 300 pounds and you have to process it, it's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Me and another person were like... Ah! I've always wanted to do that, man. My brother Chad and I love like just do, doing the the, yeah. the botany stuff in general. We grow a lot of different plants. I have a whole garden out back and everything. Yeah, and, no, we're we're, we're yeah. doing the same thing this year. You know, we're we got a couple plants going, and then we've got our garden. You know, yeah, we've got vegetables and fruit and everything else. So it's once you've lived out in the middle of nowhere, and that's what everybody does. You learn how to do it, and it's it's a much simpler way of life. I like yeah. it. Oh, I we, would much rather be this living in society isn't really for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was fun growing up in it, but it's it's much more peaceful. The people that you meet in the great outdoors are much more down to earth. They're not worried about, you know, what color their lipstick is and if their <laughs> shoes look all right and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's... Uh, it's I, I like it. That's where I want to spend the rest of my life. Yeah, and we're gonna I, I we're gonna get it. us a place in Oregon somewhere, and we're gonna go see, hit all sixty one national parks and live in the national parks for a while. That sounds amazing. Yeah. That's such a great idea to just like go spend the rest of the time just hitting national parks and camping and enjoying yeah. the stars. And I'm I'm assuming you love yeah. fishing. Oh yeah, I love fishing when I go yeah. camping. Yeah, no. Right. Anything that we can do that's natural and self sustaining, that um doesn't leave a big footprint yeah is 
is what I'm striving for, you know. Yeah. You know, you get you get stuck in your societal ways and get the conveniences of life and out in, out, out in the outdoors, there's no convenience of anything <laughs> but what you set up for yourself, you know? Yeah. You know, and I mean, you, can't, you can prepare yourself so that things are easier, but all the work is uh, your own hard work and taking care of stuff and determination. You have to learn the, the, the seasons and what you do in this season and that season, it's, and it happens. Yeah. You know, and it's, it keeps everybody busy and out of trouble. In society, when you got a, you know, you're on a regular job where you're, you go to the store to buy everything, you're not growing it and you're not having to preserve it and you're not having to, you know, process all that stuff. And you're just instant gratification or whatever by going to the store. It's totally different than living off the grid. Oh yeah. <laughs> so a lot of your a lot of your days taken up by like just cleaning up, cooking, preparing everything. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's this discipline that you have to have too because I mean you can't just not. Well, clean up that shit, you know, like you, you're out in the woods and, you know, it's, it's going to attract animals you don't want. Correct. And, uh, yeah, you have to have that discipline out there of like constantly being on right. and you, making sure the shit's okay. It. Yeah. You compost everything. Everything's natural yeah. that you're doing, you know, so you're composting that stuff, learning how to, uh, do things. I mean, if you've set up generators and stuff, then you can have some of the conveniences of a refrigerator and a freezer and oh, yeah. all that type of stuff and air conditioning and heating. But most of the time, your heating comes from a wood burning stove and a fireplace, you know? And so you got to deal with finding wood and storing the wood so that it doesn't get wet and just tons and tons of stuff. And then that brings rats and spiders and it just. All this stuff Don't that I you learn. You know? That's how we did growing up, man. We yeah. were always like, uh, even you know, you know, living in the city, it was like, fuck that. We're gonna we're gonna use this wood burning stove that we have in the house, and we would always have to just keep a huge pile of wood in the backyard. And I fucking hated going and getting the goddamn wood. <laughs> Black widows crawling all over me. I'm still traumatized by that shit, man. <laughs> you know, I go out I and I see wood, and I'm like, and... there's definitely fucking spiders under that log. Yeah. Every time I see fucking piece of wood, Diane, I'd be like. I... Give me so she would use gloves, you know. But, yeah. Uh, man, I just uh, I go in, I look first, you know. Okay, well, let's kill that one. <laughs> no, I don't no. have to worry about it. But yeah, no, they're there. Oh yeah. You know, just like here in the desert, there's snakes. You know, we've and scorpions. Yeah, and we've encroached. Well, the most of the scorpions that we have here, we have natural scorpions here because I was born and raised here, so I've been here quite a while, and there was lots of scorpions when we were a kid. Yeah. But as we've encroached on it, but most of the scorpions that people are finding in their homes nowadays come in on the palm trees that they've imported from Arizona. Yeah, and the, the, the yellow ones, right? Yeah, the the, the tree scorpions. Yeah, and they're in everybody's houses. I, when I was living up in uh, Desert Shores, yeah, we had we have to use the black light and stuff at night to go around the house and find them on the outside because if not, they're in the house. Yeah, and they were under our bed. They were all kinds of places. They scare the crap out of Diane. <laughs> so. It took me a good while to to uh, to really clear this this house out. Oh, right? you had him here? Oh yeah, yeah. But I've, I've been here for so long, right. and I've had uh, bulwark, which is friggin' amazing with the scorpions. By the way, I really love their service. Okay, but uh, they. Uh, they put a perimeter on the property, and then they spray the shit out of everything, and they come and they spray inside, and they, they really make sure that there are... And if I see a fucking scorpion, like, if I even see one, right, I just go, you're spraying my whole house again, do the perimeter again, it doesn't cost me anything extra, right? Okay. And they, they get rid of that shit. They're gone, you know? The, huh. the problem I have is every once in a while, I think one of my... Maybe a neighbor's fucking scorpion comes over or something like that, or it comes on from the fucking road, you know? But, like, my property's murdered. Yeah. It's, uh... Uh, it's a it's it's a little bug. It's afraid of you just as much as you are of it. So sometimes, man, I was I'd be sitting in the garage, man, chilling out, and I I had a scorpion one time. Like I I was like, oh shit, there's a scorpion right there, and it fucking just locked onto me and started rushing right for my feet. Like I'm gonna get there. I was like, Jesus, Christ, you know, like no, no, if I don't, aggressive bastard. I try not to kill things, but you know, in those instances, like when we were up in Ely, yeah, you know, I come out. Um, out to our side door and there's a rattlesnake yeah you know we're not, we're not gonna let it go i don't need it around the house so you you gotta get rid of that fucking thing yeah, it's you know done. it but sucks killing things i, I, I don't it. like doing I, it i either. hate it but you know i don't want it killing me first for being foolish yeah <laughs> exactly like we had a couple wasps to get in our tent when we were up camping this weekend and it right. was like we took the time to like kind of get some paper and get it the fuck on the get out get of the out. tent you know right. go yeah. do your thing 
I don't want to fucking kill anything. Yeah, I don't no. have to. I try. But the scorpions, to. like, I don't really need to get stung on my foot in right. the middle of the night. Fuck those scorpions. It won't kill you, but it'll hurt like hell, and it, it yeah. could get infected, and there's all kinds of... You should probably go to the hospital or at least yeah. have some anti-venom of some kind, but... Yeah, there's no... I don't think there's an anti-venom for scorpions. Is there not? No. no. no it's not like... It's not the same type of venom. It's not the same thing as, like, a black widow biting you. No. And it's not the same thing as a rattlesnake, you know? Yeah, a rattlesnake, it's, you're fucked. Well, not... Not necessarily. I, I mean, <laughs> my my friend, uh, when we were kids, we were up in Sandstone Quarry, and he got bit by a sidewinder okay. on, on his thumb here, and um, it was a, a a baby. And they say the babies are more deadly because they don't know how to control how much venom they, they yeah. release, and so they just release it all. <laughs> yeah. And so he got bit, and we went to the hospital, and uh, he sat there in the emergency room for two hours, and then they gave him the anti venom, and he got deadly sick. From the de- from the antivenom, oh, he was wow. fine until they gave it to him. Until they gave it to him, and then he was just sick for two weeks. Oh, it was just nasty. He's like, oh, I wish I'd have never done it. I was doing good. <laughs> yeah, but how but, long? Yeah, how much but, longer was he gonna be doing good? Right. I don't know. I'm not you a fucking don't, doctor. Me either. And but he sat there for over two hours and had no effects. Yeah, yeah. after the after the snake bit him, huh? Correct. That's pretty. That's pretty good to know. I'm glad. Uh, I, I like that story. And that, that whole myth of, of Cutting and sucking it out. That's and all just that. too late. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's already in your bloodstream. Yeah. Yeah. You're fucked. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you don't want to do that with cer- certain ones. They like, so there's certain venoms, right, uh, that are going to like paralyze you right. and, and fuck with like neurovenoms. Right. You and then need there's to get, other need... venoms, though, that are going to dissolve your flesh so that they can, they can just suck it out of you. Well, yeah, like right? the brown recluse. You don't yeah. Want to don't be anything. sucking that back the fuck out of you. You know, you're going to dissolve your own tongue or some bullshit, right? Yeah. Like, you just got to be careful with that kind of shit. Yeah, that's gross. You don't know what kind of poisons <laughs> in your body, you know. They, like, your immune system ain't going to fight that stuff off. No, 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 no. So. Yeah, that's just, that shit's fucking scary, man. Interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you're liking the new system, man? I do. Got all my new fancy cameras going on. It's awesome. I'm I'm glad you invited me over to uh, sit and chat and see where it goes. Yeah, it's fun, man. I love doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, these new cameras are working out great. It's uh, the A-B shot fucking being identical is so much better for me. Like, right. oh, my God. It's almost like uh, a real podcast for two seconds. So, well, it yeah. is a real podcast, I, I would know. assume. All right. All you got to do is talk into some microphones. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not in virtual reality that I'm aware of. <laughs> At least not yet. Well, I mean, that's debatable, <laughs> right? I mean, have you... Uh... I've, I, I've heard the uh, Matrix theory yeah, of the civilization. Simulation. Yes. I love that. Or that we're a programmed universe from... You know, I've heard all kinds of them. <laughs> yeah. There's all kinds of fun ones to think about. But, I mean, uh, that's, that concept even has been going on uh, for, what, 2,500 years. Buddhism fucking calls this whole thing a, an illusion. Well, yeah. You know, they, they say even before they were aware of, like, quantum physics and particles and shit like that, they were right. just like, they were like, yeah, we're made up of infinite smaller fractions particles. of particles, right? Yeah, and, uh, uh, well, it's all light and energy. Yeah, it's all just, yeah. They, they, they were like, yeah, this isn't... This is just an illusion, you know. Well, that plus, plus, you know, so you have, you know, every everything's made up of light and energy, and then you have the universal consciousness. Yeah. And that's what people don't um, quest to be able to access, because it is. That's where we are all one. Yeah. It's from the same consciousness. That's what makes us as humans different than every other species on the planet, is that single consciousness. Yeah. And uh, so it's just... Uh, with, I don't know, we could get into some crazy theories Let's that I have. Let's get into some crazy theories. I love crazy <laughs> theories. Tell me, man. You know, uh, Buddhism says uh, that we're all, um, we're all God kind of playing a trick on himself, right? He's like, so for so many millions of years, the universe is aware that it's the universe and it's aware that it's this uh, uh, omnipotent being. And then for millions of years, it goes on board with this knowing thing. Let's, let's go and pretend like I don't know that I'm God and I'll be all these different people and observe consciousness or I'll observe myself from all these different perspectives. And they're saying that that's what we're doing right now. You know, oh, that, um, I haven't heard that one, but yeah. Yeah, that we, we're all just God playing a trick on himself just to entertain himself for a little while. 
because he's yeah it's it's well it's just part of the illusion kind of thing we're all playing these roles right it's, it always seems like we're just actors on a stage playing a part that we're given and it's like if you especially when you go into like um sort of like out-of-body experiences or uh, you, that kind of thing you realize that oh that there is a separation between my consciousness or my, my spiritual energy right and mm -hmm. the the physical body that i'm I'm Correct. currently you, occupying. Right. You aren't the body. Yeah. The body is a physical thing. You as a being, which is part of that consciousness, is separate from the body. And when the when the body dies, the being does not. And that's why we all have eternal life. That's where yeah. all that... Pe people don't take things literally in when they're supposed to. And when yeah. they're not supposed to, they're trying. So. But, I mean, there's all things, if you want to get talking about religion and what Christ, what his purpose was here yeah and uh, you know if, if everybody could learn forgiveness that was his that was his teaching you know but a lot of people don't know how to forgive it's one of the most important things you can do in life is just forgive people and learn how to forgive people because well you have to forgive yourself as well because yes. that, that's hard to love yourself if you don't forgive yourself for mistakes we all make mistakes yeah you know but if you never get past them it's it's life can be rough <laughs> that's one of the hardest things in life man it took me um I, I didn't truly learn to love myself i think till i was about 34 years old um and uh and that was really hard for me so like I, I didn't realize that i didn't love myself properly you know what i mean but your internal dialogue is just berating yourself you don't give yourself the proper love i give other people love right and mm -hmm. i would treat other people I, totally differently than I would actually treat myself, right? right? When we beat ourselves up, mainly, yeah. usually inside, internally, we're like, oh, you fucking idiot, what do you do that for? Da, da, da. That kind well, of I, talk is that, bullshit. Well, that plus the self, you know, we do have that self-destructive thing. When we do get good, we we don't feel deserving. Yeah. And we self-sabotage. I mean, it happens all the time. And until you realize these things and try and figure it out, but, that, you know, life for me has been a journey and a quest. And, you know, you, I was brought up one thing and have evolved through many different things just because I am a free thinker and I want to know and I'm going to find out for myself. I'm not going to believe everything I'm told or anything else without investigating yeah. to, to find out if there's truth in it, you know, because everybody's reality is different. And literally everybody <laughs> and everything's reality. Nobody has the one true reality, well, right? Because no, reality is not even a real thing, right? Well, it's this quantum information soup of fucking it's what just, you create with this yeah right here, this your hallucinator mind, your mind yeah. and if you don't learn how you know th that's the thing you have a body and then there's you and then you have a mind which is a tool but if the tool is um out of control and you don't keep it in check and learn how to meditate and mm -hmm. calm and quiet the mind because communication is a two-way thing and that's this is a big thing that i don't see a lot of religions um putting out there is that you know they, they want you to pray everybody wants you to pray that's you talking to god the consciousness yeah okay you're asking questions okay well meditation is you sitting there listening for the answers right <laughs> if you don't ever take the time to sit down and quiet the mind and have no thoughts and just let whatever come in come in it's it's a one it's all one-sided communication yeah you know, and they said, he never answers. Like, well, have you ever taken the time to sit and meditate and find out what the answers are? Yeah. <laughs> They're there. And it's not, um, I think a lot of people, um, they take the word meditate and they, they want to attach it to like uh, a different religious practice than their own. And it really isn't, it's more of a therapeutic action, right? And it's, it's a, it's a, a, um, it's a, a focused activity that actually works. Correct. And it's not it's not hocus pocus or anything like that. And all you're literally doing is trying to calm your mind down and let thoughts pass through you as opposed to attach yourself to those thoughts. Right. Because um, everything you think is not true. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't. I, and everything you think isn't you. Right. right. Yeah. Like your brain's just going to spit shit at you constantly because it's like, oh, I'm fucking up. You know, like, let's uh, let's fucking harass this guy all day long. I got I got all kinds of shit. You know, my job is to think about things. And so the brain just sits there and thinks about things and it lets you know, here's a notification. It's like it's like if you turn the notifications on every single app on your phone. And just was on it. Like, I got to pay attention to all these <laughs> notifications I'm getting on my phone.
phone all day long, you wouldn't be able to fucking focus on anything. No. And your brain's doing the same goddamn thing to you, man. Until you learned how, until I learned how to quiet it, which I was terrible at it my whole life. And again, I just, you know, the past two years I've been getting more focused on my you know, my meditation practices. Right. And the benefits are amazing. And the mindfulness techniques that you learn from the meditation practices that you carry throughout the day, being aware of your thoughts and being mindful of how you're thinking and when you lose that focus. Right. Because you're, you're like, ah, oh, you're just off on a fucking tangent and you're thinking about the future, you're thinking of the, about the past, yeah. what I should have said in this situation or what I'm going to do coming up in a few weeks or, you know, what, you know, all these things that you don't need to be thinking about because you're here right now. Right. Well, if you live in the present, that makes life really, really simple. Um, when you live in the past, you're usually depressed. Yes. And if you live in the future, trying to be ahead of everything, you're, you're anxious. You have anxiety. Yeah. And so the best place to be is here and now. Yeah. And so all those I've, I have learned how not to think about something that could be tomorrow or the next day. I, I might put a like a, what do you call it? Like a bookmark on your map or whatever. Boom. Okay. Got it. Yeah. But I'm not going to think about it anymore until I'm in the moment. Yeah. And that's how I kind of live. And it drives Diane crazy. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> she wants to plan everything, you know? And I'm like, I don't plan nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's I'm all, in the moment, you know? It's all going to go to <laughs> shit anyways, right? Like, <laughs> well, I'll, hopefully not. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> but when you're thinking, you're thinking in 15 different directions. You yeah. know what? I don't want to think in those 15 different directions. When I get to the thing, I want to think on where I want to go and having a good time at doing it and everything else. And I've already taken the precautions and have done my research. I'm not going to get in over my head or I'm going to kill myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I don't mind living on the edge. That's, you know, that's like, cool. I, I'm spontaneous. Let's go. We'll do it and we'll make it happen. And, but some people can't operate that way. They haven't learned to shut that, that mind down and da -da 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 -da. they've got every scenario down to the nth degree. And you're yeah. like, this is, this is where we're supposed to be at this time of the day. <laughs> and it's just like, oh man, shit happens. Life is just, it's a, it's, you know, it, it fluctuates right. and you just got to just go with it. Man. Well, the whole it's thing okay. is enjoy the journey. Quit trying yeah. to, if, if that's not the, you know, if, it, if life keeps putting you, to go this way, sometimes those road signs will start beating you in the face and life will get really shitty until, until you, you go. Well, until you stop and read the signs for a second. Oh, I'm not supposed to be trying. <laughs> Cause you know, those, those, those life lessons do happen, you know? Yeah. And the, the whole thing with life is people thinking that this physical world and what we do and status and all that stuff, unless you get into metaphysics, metaphysics and quantum physics, and learn about the stuff that you can't see and that has a lot of influence, um, like your subconscious. And um, this whole, uh, for me, this is like, a, this is one of those political things, this whole global warming thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've read a series of books of probably 10, 15 years ago now um, called the Cryon series. And it's a guy that channels energy. Mm -hmm. And um, they talk about in this, um, in, in this series of books about how our poles shift on the earth. And they've, it, they've had it recorded where the poles have flipped and everything else. Well, when the poles shift, if this is your north and south here and it goes 17 degrees away from where it was, things start to melt and get warmer before things cool off and freeze so there that's a natural phenomena of the uh poles shifting that all that stuff melts because now where it went to where it was hot it's going to start getting cold there and eventually will freeze like the other poles were and so i don't really buy into it, but there's stuff in here that you can tap into that consciousness and the future is out there that this thing about, about time travelers and stuff and there's been mediums throughout history and people like edward casey and stuff like that that have been able to predict stuff and be able to warn people about things that are coming around the corner because they can look into that because they've figured out how to tap into that consciousness and it's um i've experienced that stuff and it's it's kind of interesting and scary because you have to spend a lot of time to get into it to figure out what it really is <laughs> it's <laughs> 
Yeah, I've noticed a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, I just say read. It, yeah, I, I read. Tons of reading and reading. And, you know, as you do that, you, it, it's like getting tools for life. And if you can use that tool, you use it. And then when it's no longer any good for you, you pass it on and you try and find new tools. And learning, it comes from many different ways now. I mean, before it was mainly books. Now we've got so much multimedia and everything else, but you don't know how much of that is fact. Yeah. But once again, you have to stop and say, was this something that somebody just created yeah. on their computer? Is this something that really happened? Was it Photoshopped or did this, you know, there's just tons you gotta of You got to research that. like um, who's giving you the information, right? right? Like yeah. I like, um, there's one of the shows that I like that's kind of funny that feeds you information called uh, Adam Ruins Everything. Okay. And um, <laughs> what I like about the show is um, they go after, like, information about something, thinking that this is the kind of the story. But then a lot of times they have to ch totally change their narrative based on the information that they've collected. And the, the, the episode goes a completely different direction than they thought it was going to go because they don't, you know, they're not going to bias the information and do the narrative that they went into it thinking that this is how it's going to be, right? right yeah. They just follow the information to where it takes them. And then also, like, um, they'll do um, redactions or whatever, right? They'll they'll come back on and say, oh, well, we later on, like, in season two or whatever, and now we're in season three, uh, it uh, says, uh, you know, oh, well, we fucked, oh, the, we, we fucked this up. Okay. Right? Yep, yep, yep. We yeah. revisit it and see we, Yeah. We were wrong, yeah. Okay. And I like that kind of shit because <clears throat> when you're giving people information and you're like supposed to be a source of knowledge, mm -hmm. you're never going to give the right answer 100% of the time, right? Like that's, that seems like probability's sake is impossible. Correct. But the best thing is in, instead, of, instead of giving them the answer is tell them where they can find the answer. That's also a great strategy. Because that way they learn it on their own. Yeah. And people learn it and it becomes part of them. If you... You know, having gone to college, if somebody sits and regurgitates a bunch of crap to you, most of the time you don't remember it. No. If you study it and make it your own and you have to do it and then you get the gain from it, then it is your own. You know, but sitting there and listening to somebody tell you something doesn't usually get it. You're going to go find out either the hard way, you know, or yeah. how many times you can touch the hot iron. Yeah, that's hot. Ow. <laughs> you know, or... Okay, I got that lesson. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it takes more than once. Yeah. So, and I, uh, yeah, I like to um, bring it back. I'm doing the um, the whole eightfold path uh, journey right now, and it's like you can read these chapters of each path, the eightfold path, and uh, it'll, you know, you absorb the knowledge. But right. until you until you spend your day by day kind of really trying to focus and apply everything you do and say through that, that scale of the Eightfold Path, right? Um, you're not really practicing it. Being aware of it and actually putting it into practical practicing. use yeah, right. and practicing it are two completely different things. You, right. know, and, and well, you have to have the first one, though, before you can put it in yeah, practical. Yeah. So the awareness and, is always the first. <laughs> yeah. But awareness isn't... Um, the end step, right? You have to, that's, that's what I was getting at. So you have to, you, you, you can, you can obtain the knowledge, but until you put it into practice, it's useless to you, right? Well, I, yeah. I mean, I learned, uh, I, I learned at one point in my, my life that there are only three barriers to studying anything. Okay. And that's an undefined word or a mis, uh, a misdefinition of a word, too steep a gradient or absence of mass. Those three things are what create you to learn. You either Read it. You can read all you want about building a car motor, but if you've never had a motor or saw one, all that knowledge means nothing. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't even know what a motor looks like. You just read about it. So if you don't have mass to go with that knowledge, that's a big, huge learning block. Yeah. You know, if you have misunderstood words where you didn't understand it, your attention is stuck on that, and you'll never understand anything forward from that because you are not fully trying to grasp it because your your subconscious is stuck where you didn't understand something what the hell was that uh, uh. one of my favorite things about our phones is you, you can, can look, just, look you can up. look at any time dude I'll, if i get a new word i'm like oh new word and i gotta like pull up on my phone and i'm all stoked i get to fucking learn a new word today you know all right well the, the, the thing is, is and and they don't teach us that when we're young they should but uh when you get into 
into what they call word chains, where you go to look up a word. Now you've looked the definition of a word. And now you got five new words in the definition of the word you just looked up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. That's exactly it right and there. So, right? you know, but the whole thing is, is that once you've gone through that and I did that, I, I, at one point in my life, I was a Scientologist, and that's part of how they teach you to train. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about that, son. Okay, no problem. I, here, I'll, I'll run through just the thing. I was raised a Mormon. Um, I didn't buy into that. And then uh, I became a Scientologist, and after a while, I was like, yeah, this can't be what it, what they're saying it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. Okay, and then I was nothing, and then I studied all the Eastern philosophies Which for a while, the Booze, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Taoism all, I checked it all out. Um, the closest thing I found was Buddhism. Yeah. But there, I still had issues with some of that stuff. And then... Well, that's um, why there's so many different schools of Buddhism too, correct. right? Because yep. a lot of people feel that way where they're well, like, oh, well, I like this, but it's like, but this would feel better for me. And, I, and what's cool about Bud Buddhism is just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, <laughs> dude. If well, that's what uh, makes you feel good, you know, like it's your journey. Right. I went to I went to Cambodia and I went to Angkor Wat. Yeah. And the Buddhists kind of hang out in that temple, and so as you're going through there, they'll sit and have conversations with you, and they speak good English, and you know they're looking. I I wouldn't say a handout, but that you know that they're they're having knowledgeable conversations and stuff with people that come through the temple and all that stuff that's how they survive so you know you give them some money and your money is way more than their money over there in Cambodia yeah. you're talking about a third world country and it's just an interesting thing Thailand same way lots of Buddhists and uh, it's it's I think it's a more happy energy environment <laughs> yeah you know you don't yeah. have um, you don't have that figurehead looking down on you watching your every oh. fucking move kind See, I of never, attitude I never I, I knew enough Catholics that I never got into that whole guilt thing, yeah. you know, but, but in 95, I went to Europe and I had just graduated, um, college cause I didn't go to college till I was 30. Fucking and I started college when I was 30 and I graduated when I was 35. And, um, but I went, I went over to Europe and I went to all of the major museums and stuff like that, that I had studied in college. You know, and saw all that great art and stuff. And what I noticed in all the theme of every one of those major museums was the Jesus theme. And I never really understood, even as a Mormon, I didn't really understand the whole Jesus thing. And so when I got back from the trip, all I could think of was, and then I went with my friend who was very religious and this and that and his parents. And I, so I sat down and talked to him. I was about, well, what is this whole Jesus thing? There's got to be something for throughout time that the great arts of the world that's the theme yeah. <laughs> you know and so it's like there had to be more than what i was seeing so i dove into christianity for a good year year and a half and at that point um because i am college educated and i do go and figure out things and do my own research and stuff it was really hard to have conversations with pastors because they seemed like they all had blinders on. And if they couldn't refer to what I was talking about out of the Bible, they were lost. Yeah. And, you know, the Bible is a great book, but you, 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 people don't even believe what they read. And I mean, Jesus says right in, 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 in the New Testament, these things I do, you can do and more. That's what he said. But nobody tries to do what Jesus did. Oh, yeah. Nobody talks about the 12 years he was gone. Well, where did he go? Well, he went to the Himalayas and became a monk. Yeah. And he learned this stuff. It's not something that he, just because he was a son of God, he was born with. He, he was just a human flesh and blood, just like us. Yeah. And he just had a, a way higher conscious level than we did. <laughs> well, and I've heard, um, I've heard several uh, Buddhists bring up Jesus and say he was just a, he was a he really close to becoming like an actual Buddha or was a Buddha, um, which is few and far between, you know, and, right. um, and that's what he's trying to tell everybody, you know, like as he's saying, you know, um, I'm the son of God or I am God. You say we're all fucking God, man. Well, it says, you know, and we all have. Once again, what does the Bible say? Yeah. That we were created in God's image. Yeah. Well, if we're created in God's image and Jesus says we can do these things and more, and why we don't believe that, but we don't take the time 
to investigate how yeah. we could do that. And we get caught up in the rat race. You know, Bob Marley had a lot of things right. <laughs> you know, and uh, it's just, it, it, it's sad that, that uh, his message, that's uh, one of the things that they should be playing in these rough times right now, is there's a few people that had a good message yeah. back then. And it's still reflecting and echoing today that, that they could do. But, yeah, no, it's a, life is a journey. You try and figure it out and you go through and grab all these different tools. And if it doesn't work for you, you move on. And if it does, you, you keep it. And that's what I try and tell people. They try about, you know, rehab. If I'm addicted to this or I'm addicted to that, you know, what do you do? But the whole thing is, is life is a journey. Go through it. When, it, when life starts to suck, what you're doing isn't working. It's time to change something. Yeah. Just have the have the power to, to, to affect yourself in a positive way, you know? Right. Don't let these fucking, like, like rehab and shit like that, right? Like, if that's what it takes to get off of a substance, that's great. But it's like, you got to learn that these substances are, are just negative fucking impacts on your life. And right. sure, you're going to relapse, but just, like, forgiveness, right? We're talking about loving yourself. Correct. Don't beat the shit out of yourself for relapsing, man. It's okay. Like, it's okay. So, okay, okay, I fucked up. I fucked up. Most people myself. don't decide to change, though. Yeah, I love myself. And then I go forward and say, okay, we're going to stop again tomorrow. We stopped already. All right. right? And you got to do it. Like, when I quit alcohol, right? Like, yeah. I, I quit I probably six times I quit, right? Before it really stuck. And um, and that was the thing, right? I'd, I'd relapse. And instead of forgiving myself, right, I'd berate myself. And then i go, well, fuck it. I'm, I'm smoking cigarettes, that. too, now, you know? And I'd start smoking again. And then, um, and then it's like three months, six months down the line. It's like, I'm fucking, you know, I'm wasted at a bar, smoking a pack of cigarettes going, what the fuck, man, you had this under control. And it's like, all right, get your shit together. You, again. Forgot, you forgot the one thing you want to uh, sit in front of a video poker machine, right? Oh yeah. Video <laughs> poker machine. Of course. So playing gotta, video poker. I'm gambling, so I'm right? You're yeah. gambling, you're drinking, you're smoking. Yeah. You're <laughs> fucked. Right. But you got to forgive yourself and fucking love yourself and move forward. And it's hard. It's it's like, like we were saying, that's one of the hardest things to do, man. Yeah, and th for me, you know, that's why, I, that's, I guess that's how I learned to respect other religions and, and religion in itself is that if that's your path and that's what keeps you from being an asshole person, but uh, what I hate is when people use that religion to hide behind it and they are the asshole person, but they go to church every week and think yeah. that because they go to church that they're a good person, <laughs> in reality they aren't, but, you know, it's... Yeah. We see them. Yeah, we see them. Oh yeah, you you can't fucking hide behind that shit, man. No, you know. No, no. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's 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 a lot of people too that I, do that kind of bullshit. Well, I just wish that people would once again be a free thinker about things. Yeah. If every religion out there is claiming to be the one, then none of them are. Yeah. <laughs> they cancel all. They of them can't out. be. But the, the whole thing is, is they all have good points. Yeah. Every last one of them has good qualities. Absolutely. And then, all of them have some bad qualities where, you know, like, you know, Catholicism. Why would they want to make you feel guilty? You're born a sin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. And then everything you do, you're a sinner. You're a sinner. You repent. And you're, you're like. I think a lot of it, um, religions like that and like, like right, where they had the conversion of the King James Bible. Right. And, um, and that was. Uh, the Jehovah Witnesses. And there's yeah. just certain different. It's an attempt to control, I think, the population. Well, I think that's what, how it started to begin with. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. And they keep, keep manipulating it to try to control you more and more and like get, get people to just stop fucking killing and raping and stealing from each other because we're goddamn animals. <laughs> You know what I mean? And they're like, anarchy and violence are what we crave, right? Like, you fucking, I'll get in a, a rabbit hole or, you know, diving down YouTube channels and just going, oh, shit, look at that. You know? And it's like, I love it. And uh, I think there's something primal and instinctual about that. And, um, and the government is always like, fucking, we got to keep all these goddamn monkey people from fucking rising up against us. And, uh, you know, and it's just like... Um, and it, that's it. You know, they got to keep us entertained. They got to keep us docile. They got to give us sports and, and booze, right? Like the prohibition. <laughs> Fuck you, man. You're taking our booze away. And they're like, oh, okay, give it back to them. Never mind. Never mind. This isn't working, They right? never really took it away. They just 
it just went from being open to being in the back alleys and everybody, yeah. you know, every once in a while somebody getting killed over it, you know? Like everything always does, right? Yeah. I, I'm a big, honestly, I'm a firm believer that all drugs should be legal. I don't give a shit. I mean, heroin and everything, man. Like, if you want to fuck your life up, fuck your life up, man. I don't care. But we shouldn't be sending you to jail over it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, And the whole thing is, is they shouldn't, they, they shouldn't be having to commit crimes. Yeah. To, because... It's just somebody, one, either trying to escape or experimenting. Yeah. That's what people yeah. do. Or they're lost. Right. And they need help. They need fucking help, you know? But we don't need to put them in a fucking cage. Like, that's fucked, right? And, and like, prostitution, too, man. Like, that's been going on forever. Right. Forever. It's the oldest right? profession. Why are we going right? to... Why, why do we have to force people to do that shit in back alleys and stuff where there's no regulations, man? It's like, you can make that clean and take care of these people, you know, and, like, make sure that they're safe. It's not the greatest idea, like, for some people to have a hard time with that, right? But it's a reality. It's already happening. It's already... Everything that you make illegal just goes uh you know behind the curtains right and it becomes it. much more unsafe and unregulated right but and, and, but regulation isn't the answer to everything no it is you're talking about government and government big government well yeah <laughs> what i'm what i am talking about is um safe work environments for these people right because right they're just they're just in fucking drug houses right. you know yeah, prostituting yeah, yeah. themselves well, and getting infect you know getting stds that's and infections if they choose stuff. to go that way and have yeah. a pimp and do it that way yeah. as opposed to well, there's I mean, the option they can go like here we right we have we have um, brothels we have brothels and stuff like that right. and those, and those, those are those regular medical checks that kind of shit that's right. what i'm talking about yeah, you know, yeah, keep yeah. people safe if they're going to do it anyways well it's just crazy yeah. especially now with the multimedia stuff it's 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 much easier to put it out there as it was before you, you yeah know? now it's like oh where are you at oh okay you know it's just everywhere yeah like even on craigslist you're looking you're not supposed to be doing that on craigslist but you know, go through ads and you'll see things that this doesn't look right oh yeah. okay that's why it doesn't look right that's that's somebody advertising you can't control it <laughs> you can't control it people want to have fun right like people want to get fucked up and forget about reality and people want to like if some people have a hard time talking to women or they just prefer to just pay for sex or whatever the fucking thing is and right. some girls want to fucking make money without you know right. dealing yeah. with all the other bullshit that's right. a simple thing they want to do it i had a fucking family member that wanted to come out here and start shooting porn and all this stuff and she was super into it like it wasn't like she's being forced to do it or anything you know right. it's like oh, this is my dream like whatever, everybody has their own thing that they want, right? Okay. And the it's whole like, thing I did what you tell her, tell her to come out here and go to the AVNs one year. Right? Come check it out. See what yeah. it's really like. See what the, see these are the people that you'll be working with right here. Yeah. Every one of them. They're yeah. all right here. This is where they come every year. <laughs> come and check it out. You know, and mm -hmm. Maybe you can see that that it does, it's not might not be the best career choice, or maybe it is for them. You know, right, like yeah. some people really love it. I, I did you see that fucking documentary on Netflix about the adult industry? I haven't yet. It was brutal, man. It was yeah. brutal. Yeah, like they really enjoy what they're doing. What sucks is that is the stigma of society is what the problem is really because they're basically walking around with a scarlet letter on their chest. Oh, you work in fucking porn, and they like a lot of it. Like, so they enjoy what they're doing, right? Um, and the the obviously the technicians enjoy making it. You know, everybody's having everybody's you know having fun and enjoying themselves and like doing what they they're all consenting adults and then society goes um ew you know oh well, you do that right and um well, that's why and we like have, their family disowns the them well that's and all this shit happens to them and it really sucks man the, you know? the family disowns them because they think they failed <laughs> yeah and it's like man they're making good money and they're doing the thing you know like they're not look, out killing people right yeah they're not out killing people they're not hurting anybody there's a market for it and they're making money yeah that's, and it's like the shame behind it well but the whole thing terrible. is our our monetary society has set up that you know, if you're one of the have-nots, that you try and find any means that you can to be able to survive in that society. Yeah. And um, if you're not willing to just go out and live off the land, now you have to figure this puzzle out because society is a big puzzle and the rules change daily. And besides the rules changing, you have just have different people's attitudes and everything else to come into play and at any given moment shit can go south <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like it has right now right, right. like we're it, in one of those points yeah, it's just like but it's great because you know it's we know it comes after a fucking big uh spike downward right is a uh, shoot big shoot up man that's how it goes and then it'll go down and come back up again we're gonna be coming back up here pretty soon oh. i mean it's inevitable i mean it might, maybe it's not sooner than later but it's it has to happen at some point or another, you know, well, shit's yeah, going to pop. Nothing stays the same. No, that's life. As George Harrison said, all things must pass. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Friggin', uh, 
Yeah, and it, like uh, like you're saying about uh, the fucking rat race that society puts in front of people too. It's brutal, right? Yeah. Like uh, every it seems like okay. every month there's some other fucking thing I got to take care of. Whether it's like car it's registration, a new, or new insurance, fucking What's paperwork, tax money? money. You know, like uh, I'm just constantly having to fill out all this documentation. And constantly having to do just like, it's just like this mountain of fucking paperwork and I got to file this and I got to do this and I got to have all this fucking insurance for everything and, uh, you know, rent and bills and, and fucking, it's just, it's like, man, and you're already, you know, you're working 60 to 80 hours a week and it's like, just, they just, <laughs> they got you, you know, you're like, and you got to fucking sleep at some point, at some point you're eating and it's like, now you have like 25 minutes of personal time, you know, and you can't even fucking exercise in that time. You just want to, <sighs> Well, that's where you've, that's where, where your, your best skill of prioritizing, if you don't have a good skill of prioritizing, yeah. then your life can get out of control. It does. But, uh, you it know, does. to me, a lot of that stuff doesn't matter and it drives Diane crazy. And I'm, I, I, here's what I say. I look, I go, we're an animal on this planet, just like every other animal. The only difference is our consciousness. Yeah. Why is it we're the only animal on this fucking planet that uses a clock? Yeah. What the fuck do we need a clock for? To keep track of everything. The fuck that. We want to put everything in a nice, <laughs> neat little box. We want to break it down to as many finite sections as we fucking well, can so we can analyze it, now, right? Now, have you seen that comedian that does the, the difference between the man's brain and the woman's brain? And men's brains are all compartmentalized and they yeah. don't touch. And when you want to talk about that, that's what the box, they pull it out. And that's the only thing you talk about. Yeah. <laughs> and then the women's brain is like a ball of, a ball of wire. And yeah. they go, zzz, zzz, and everything's connected. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's it's on there. You can uh, just just Google it. It's hilarious. But that's that's because guys are different. They're wired different than, yeah. than girls. And it's it's we have a different thought pattern. They speak more than we do. She asks me all the time when I call her. Well, you didn't ask that question. You didn't. Have, I, yeah. No. Well, what do I need to know that for? It's got no relevance to what the hell I'm going to do. Yeah. They're more empathetic and usually calmer, right? Yeah, like yeah. it's it's part of the spice of life, you know. It's like if if it was just dudes, right? Like oh, if it was all like-minded people in the world, what a boring fucking existence that would be. And it's like literally every uh, like 50 percent of people are this way and 50 percent of people are that way, right? Or well, I mean it's 2020, right? So I don't want to do the the binary sexuality but, thing, right, right. but but you know like uh right like you're just genetics right you're gonna have boys and girls at, the, at birth and uh uh that that whole fucking brain chemistry is completely unique to each individual and it just makes life so interesting man well, the whole thing and a lot of people i mean they know it now but you know when i was growing up they didn't know that children learn most of everything they're going to learn between the ages of three and seven yeah they've formulated most everything just by observing and what you show them and during those ages is the adults is what they learn. Yeah. <laughs> That's so. also where a lot of their um, their problems, their complexes, all their issues and emotional things that they have to figure out and deal with the rest of their life. That it, I, I believe it's one through five, actually, for that kind of shit, right? right. The traumatization. Well, it even goes before If they get a brother that, or sister, right? right. Yeah. yeah. yeah that well, kind of stuff. All of a sudden, it, it, it fucking balances out their, their emotional state differently. They handle everything through life as a different but person. But their, emo their emotional state here, I mean, this is, I, I don't know if this is something that's out there or something I just thought of or what, but... For me, when two people have a baby and at conception, what the emotional state of those two people at that time, if they were really loving each other or if, they're, if it's just a, a one-night thing and they don't ever want to see each other, all those type of things, that's mm. connected to the DNA yeah. at the time of conception. And that comes into play and with the child and how, how it learns after it's born. Yeah. And so I, I, people just don't think that, that their environment has that much control, but it does. Yeah. It, it really does. Yeah, that's what Alan Watts always says, too. He's like, there's no beginning or end to anything. He, it always starts all the way back through to even before your parents are fucking. And, uh, and, yeah. and that's the beginnings of you, right? Like, they, they, they meet, that's the beginnings of you, right? Like, that, <laughs> your, your existence, your timeline has started at that point, right? There's right. no, like, conception or three months well, into it. supposedly or, you know, like, we choose where we, yeah. where we go and we have, you know, what life lessons we're going to learn and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you get into karma and, you know, I don't know if you believe in past lives and all I that kind of stuff. I absolutely do. Well, you know, I have, having, 
having been a Scientologist and, and relived past lives, yeah. I believe in it. Yeah. Um, how I try and uh, explain myself as far as the whole Scientology is that L. Ron Hubbard wrote a book called Dianetics, and Dianetics is a, kind of a science. And that stuff is actually good stuff. The Church of Scientology, which was created, was created because he didn't want to have to pay taxes and all this other kind of stuff. And so he used that and made that into it. And they fought for years and years and years before they got yeah. looked at as a religious sect so that he didn't have to pay. <laughs> well, they had to sue everybody, right? So they had all their members and anybody that would do it sue literally every person at the IRS. So it's like dozens, if not hundreds oh, of times. Oh, no, no. They tied up the whole yeah. court. I don't know the if you saw the do- Did you yeah, watch I the watched documentary? The, yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's genius, right? Yes, like, yeah. I mean, they had no choice. Right. They're just like, we're fucked, man. I mean, we can't deal with all this paperwork. Just give it to them. And it's like, oh, you can't give it. But they had to. <laughs> Right? Tied the whole system up. There's got to, yeah. And there, I don't know, man. There, yeah, there's no. no regulation in, in place to prevent that kind of um, abuse of the system. Correct. Well, you know, they set up the system. If if you leave a back door, somebody's going to find it. That's what we do. As humans, <laughs> we just we, we're going to sit there and pick everything apart for hours and hours and hours. Like, oh, I found a little glitch right here, and they just <laughs> take advantage of it as much as possible. That's why our laws are so complicated, right? Like it started out with like, let's just say the Ten Commandments, right? Like that. Oh, don't kill, don't rape but your t- fucking sister, don't you know, steal from your neighbor, right? And then it just turned into all these stipulations as everybody fucked it up for everybody else. And it's like individual cases become individual laws. And now you just have a law book on like food that's this big. Right. And you're just like, oh my God, this many ridiculous things happened with restaurants to make this many specific laws. And it's like, well, I mean, we didn't just think of them. They happen. And then we go, oh, fuck, write another one down. Well, it's, it's because what, you know, one person ruins it for the rest. Yeah. You know, so everybody poking at the system, <laughs> trying to figure it out, man. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So how'd you get? So how'd you get out of Scientology? How was that process? And did they like? Well, did I, they come after you? Oh yeah, they because I had signed a contract to be on staff. Yeah. You know, first I went. How I got involved with it was when I was 19, 19 years old. I was completely strung out on drugs. Okay. And by the time I was nineteen, I was unemployed. I. uh I owed a lot of money to people, drug dealers, and just stupid crap, and would wake up in the morning and cry because I knew I was going to go out and commit some stupid crime. And I didn't want to be that way. That wasn't how I was raised and didn't want to be that way. So um, I got out of uh, a friend of mine and went to a drug rehab in, in Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri, and it was called Narconon. And I'm like, okay, he'd been there four or five months, and I'm like, Mark, I need to, I need to get out of here. I need to get cleaned up. And, uh, you know, back then we were eating pharmaceuticals like crazy. Back then, it, it, there was like no epidemic of them, you know, yeah. like, like with Oxycontin and stuff. All that. And now they were out there, but, you know, it wasn't as, as widespread. You know, you'd get reds and two and alls and second alls and all that shit and quaaludes. Quaaludes, that was, that was the worst drug that ever went away. Ooh. That was a great drug. <laughs> I was trying to find some in in, uh, in Mexico when I was down there, man. And that they, they, just doesn't exist, right? No, like they can, you, they can, you, get, you can get anything down there, but they couldn't get uh, no, methoquilone. No, you cannot. But anyway, so I I went through this rehab program called Narconon in St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah. And um, the drug rehab program was attached to the church. They didn't say anything about the church while you're going through the program. It's just the the, the way. And the way was very um, enlightening for me in life. I had a lot of uh, self-realizations about self-love. That's when I first learned to, to, to be able to love myself and forgive myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, t- t- so uh, as I had mentioned earlier, you find the tools within these religions that, that work for you and you hold on to them until they don't work for you. And I've been through a bunch of religions, and I use a bunch of different tools from all of them in my daily life. And so going through Narconon is how I got into Scientology, because after I got out of the drug rehab program, I think we paid like three or $4,000 to go through the program. I had gained so much and thought that it had saved my life that I wanted to be able to give back. And so I became a staff member at the, at the, the drug rehab in L.A., and it's part of the church. And then I be went uh, a- after that first stint, um, you know, they gave me a bunch of training. I didn't get a lot of auditing. And that's what you really get into Scientology for is the auditing and it, it stuff. And it, we, it, it, we'd be here for hours if you want to get into that stuff. <laughs> we won't go that far. But I got into it. And then I was on staff. And then it just, 
because the training they gave me as the ethics officer, as the ethics officer, you have to uphold the standard of ethics. You know, there, there's a difference between ethics and morals. A lot of people don't understand that, that something can be ethically right and morally wrong, which would be killing somebody. But if there's something that's killing the group, it's ethically okay to get rid of that that's killing the group. Yeah. Because it's the greatest good for the greatest number is yeah. how the universe works <laughs> regardless. And so anyways, I just had to get out of it and I just stopped and they hounded me for years and years and years, just phone calls, mail, everything. Then I come back and then I'm like, listen, it didn't add up. Okay. Yeah. I'm done. Just leave me alone. And it, you know, it was harassing for a while, but you know, th there was some good stuff in it and there was some bad stuff in it. And then after, you know, I saw the same documentary that you did and uh, that shit's just crazy. And there's a, I mean, some of that stuff, but those those training routines that they talk about in there, which makes you have confront and learn what um, what uh, intention is. When you learn what to intend something yeah. to happen. You can, yeah, but you have to know what intention is and how to put it there, and those are just laws of the universe, and that's just stuff that you learn, and it's a tool, and I carry it with me still today on things, and just like in Christianity that I learned a few things by reading the Bible so much, you know, you just get this stuff and you keep it, and it and it works for you, and if it works for you, that's why I say if it were if it's working for a person and they're a good person and they're not out to harm anybody, yeah, use that tool. But don't try and make me use your tools. <laughs> <laughs> I got my own. <laughs> Fuck today. See, intention's an interesting thing. Um, I was uh, watching some stuff about the simulation theory as well, and they mm -hmm. talk about um, how everything is being created in front of your eyes kind of thing, right? Like, until something's observed, there's no reason for it to exist. Mm -hmm. And so things don't actually, they, they, um, they, exist in a quantum state of probability right here before I, i'll hold that thought just for a second have you seen um what the bleep do we know and how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go yeah okay yeah. so those two things so uh, i just want to know if you had the same knowledge about quantum physics as i did yeah and, i love uh, that okay. shit okay but um but so with simulation theory right so they go into um the fact that um you're kind of creating the world as you intend to do things right so you're like oh like for example right i said uh we're gonna go camping in arizona at this place right so like that place didn't need to exist and and the road there didn't need to exist uh, you know until i intended on going that direction and then my intentions created this made the simulation create the path for me and it's like okay yeah we'll we'll, we'll put the processing power into making sure that this fucking pops up in front of jason and like so with intention the other direction right if you intend to like um say what you, you're, you're talking about like get a new new job or new new like well, uh, step up in life you right could, you put intention out into the world well that plus the fact if you intend somebody to do something you can you can physically control them with that intention Not without that. even touching them yeah and it, it's it's just techniques that you learn it's it's really cool um to have that stuff but um what people don't understand is that everything in that you look around and you see starts with a thought Everything in existence starts with a thought. Yeah. If you don't think it, it does not exist. If somebody thinks it, it eventually will exist because it's been put out there. And thought waves are the same things as sound waves and any type of wave, electronic wave, it, it's all the same and it finds its spot and it goes out until it hits something and it comes back. Everything has cause and effect. Everything is part of that big, huge quantum universe yeah and, you know it's uh, metaphysics the part that you don't see is very very interesting as well you know that's where you get your out-of-body experiences you know that is definitely the first time it happened to me was very trippy going whoa why am i up here looking down and checking all the well, this is wild yeah <laughs> you know and you're like I'm, I'm separate from my body what is this you know you're like i don't see me i'm down there <laughs> You know, and it's just kind of this dialogue that goes on the first time. Yeah. You know, and then you never know. And then you talk about, you know, we get into the whole thing about your third eye and 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 uh, how that opens and how things in there. But your whole, that's the whole not seeing thing and the thoughts. Everything relates to a thought. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, and you have to focus on that intent too. I'd imagine you right? you, you can't well, yes, just put the intention no, out once. You have there, to you have to meditate on it and focus well, on it's, and there, keep, there, it, keep it present. You have to be in the present yeah. moment, functioning at that. Yes, um, and you can't you can't react to outside stimuli when you are intending to do something. That's what your intention and focus is, and regardless of what coming at, is coming at you. You stay focused on that. And that really helped. While I was uh, in the drug program there as a staff member, I detoxed over 100 people off of heroin cold turkey. Wow. And there were a lot of times in those rooms where they wanted to kill me. Yeah, I bet. And they wanted to jump out windows and all kinds of stuff. And with your intention of helping that person to get through what they're going through because they're in pain. They're in physical pain. And they want to do anything. They'll lie to you, steal, cheat, beat you up, whatever it is that they got to do. But if you're focused and your intent is to do that, that's what's going to happen. And until you've gone through that process and seen how it, you know, you get, it takes training to get up to it. It's not something that just somebody gets. But that's when you're a staff member, you learn, they teach you a lot of different stuff. And that was one of the tools that is, was quite interesting. That's awesome. <laughs> so. So when you uh, when you left the Church of Scientology, how did that go down? Did you like have to like write a letter or like talk well, no. to anybody, or did you just bail? Uh, well, I just took my stuff. I mean, like when I when I first worked down in Los Angeles, I mean, I was making twenty five dollars a week, and I lived away from the program because if you lived on the at the program, you basically worked twenty four seven. Yeah. Because there was people there living there that are there. You're there to help. And as the ethics officer, that's what I went, uh, That's what they trained me as. By my intake interview, they said, "Well, this is where you, your personality, this, this is. You should go and do this." And I'm like, "Okay." So that's what I took the training in. And so it's uh, you have to be able to handle this. But I wanted to live away. So on my one day off a week, I would work in a health food store making sandwiches and selling vitamins and stuff, so that I could pay for a place to live off thing and maybe go see a movie every once in a while but other than that for two and a half years i lived and breathed the program you know and it was you know it was interesting you know we all have phases in our lives i guess you know it's like this era that era and you know and yeah. hopefully we learn from our mistakes for me everybody makes mistakes it's the people that keep making the same mistakes over and over that aren't learning from their mistakes that i feel bad for you know it's uh Nobody's perfect, but you know what? I learned real early when my mom was ironing. It's, that is hot. <laughs> that hurts. Let's not do that again. <laughs> At my age yeah. now, I know that that iron's hot, and I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> you yeah. know? So after you've had your life destroyed by you know, addictions or whatever your vice is that you cannot keep in check— <laughs> And it starts having an adverse effect on your life. You need to change, period. It's not working. Change, because that's the beauty of life. Is that every day that you wake up, you have a chance to change something and be a better person than you were the day before. I agree with that a hundred percent, man. I always try to do something to better myself every day. Oh well, yeah. And it's so rewarding, you know, because that kind of shit stacks on top of itself. You well, know, it's it, it it pays you back way more. We can't than you put change in. other people, but we can't change ourselves. You can't change anybody. Right. You cannot tell anybody shit. You can't help anybody unless they are willing to well, be even, helped. Even then, you can't. They, yeah. What's where's the phrase? Uh, no nope. good, good deed goes unpunished. That's a hundred percent true, well, man. Like, you know what? I I, I forget all the time because I try and help people too. And when we were living in Oregon, we this kid came and bought some plants from me, and I helped him get him out to his property. And then come come the beginning of October, his stuff wasn't ready, and where he was living at five thousand feet was already snowing and freezing. He called me crying and this and that and i said okay i'll come get you and get all your plans i've never just met this kid yeah seemed like a good kid get him to the house and he turned into like jekyll and hyde Damn you know right. and i'm like holy shit i bring you here i help you out i let you finish your stuff and then you treat me and my and, and, and my fiance this way this is just ridiculous yeah you know, and I'm like, well, okay, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> it's people who can't take care of themselves, right? And yeah. it's it's uh, 
I try to teach people this all the fucking time. A, you can't help anybody out if you can't even take care of your fucking self, right? right. And uh, some people <laughs> overextend themselves. They'll like they'll like neglect their own person to help uh, all these other fucking people out, you know, and it's like your fucking house is on fire, man. Like, take care of you right. first and foremost. And then... Um, he who lives and, in a glass house should not throw rocks. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and like, with people that that's not a priority for, right, or, like, their priorities are on something else, like drugs, for instance, right, uh, their addictions, uh, they... They just neglect the rest of the things in their fucking lives, including the people around them that are trying to help them, right? And they, if, if, I, if you can't fucking take care of yourself, I can't even begin to fucking help you. Right, no. You know, like, that's not even, like, I can, and and even now, like, in life, because I, I grew up just such a dumbass, and I was like, you know. That's I, hard to believe. Yeah. I, I know, Jason. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was always trying to help motherfuckers out, you know, and, like, I, I always giving somebody a place to stay or a cross, couch to crash on, and every fucking time they'd steal from me, they wouldn't fucking can pay their their rent or their bills you know uh, and no. they break all my shit and you know it's just like it, it uh it always fucking came to a bad end and it's like well stop helping these people that can't even fucking take care of themselves right. you know nope. they're it's the they're fucking they're just a mess you know like you're bringing a mess unless you're willing to well, deal with that you're, mess you're enabling them yeah you're enabling them to that's keep being a piece of shit they need life to kick the fuck out of them for a little while that's what's happening right and like let it happen they'll get their shit together or they won't but it's not your fucking problem right you know, but if someone else who, you know, has their shit together a little bit, you know, oh. you can help those people maybe a little, but you always got to keep your fucking distance, man. You got to go, well, ah, I can, maybe I'll give you some money and I don't expect that fucking money back. If you give it to me, then that's great. And I'll respect you a little more. Right. But you know, like, but that's all I can do. You know, just a little bit. Like, you can't fucking stay at my house. No. You know what I mean? Like, that's never going to happen again. Like, I vow, like, no more no more fucking roommates. No, I don't give a fuck how, how hard times are for you. You're not staying at my fucking house. You know what I mean? All if right. you're in town for a fucking week, on vacation, going to see the casino, stay at my fucking house. That's what I got a spare bedroom for. But fuck you if you're on hard. You ain't stay Because it's one week turns into three weeks, turns into three months, and you still ain't got no job. Right. Well, the worst thing at all that is then you lose your friend. Yeah, and you lose your friend. Right. Well, the the thing was was life was already taking him away, and you're like trying to hang on to your, and it's like, no, nah, he fucked up, he's gone, man. Like, just let him go. You know, right. sometimes that's what you got to do, and it's it's what's best for them. And, oh yeah. And sometimes enabling your friend just makes their fucking problem way worse. Oh, I know. Yeah. I you know I I had a lot of guilt when I was young because I was such a bad kid. I really was. I mean, yeah. I was into stealing and robbing and anything that I could do. I was into drugs, just stupid stuff. And then I had a friend that uh, I, I think at, I don't know. Oh, actually, it was I, I grad night for Disneyland. You know, they do the big thing down at Disneyland for gra the seniors graduating and stuff. And um, my mom at the last minute found out that... Uh, I wasn't going on the bus. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and that me and Steve were going in my truck. And uh, she, my mom, knowing my mom, I knew how serious she was. She says, you go. All your shit will be in the front yard when you get home and you ain't getting in the house. And I'm like, mm, well, so what did I think? I said, so all the, because I had a job. And um, I'm like, okay, so all the money that I had that I was going to use on the trip, I got to go get an apartment now. So I went and got an apartment, moved all my shit all in one day, and then I'm thinking, well, now I got no money to go on the trip. <laughs> so I, I showed Steve how to heist a purse at, in between slots. Oh, you piece of shit. I know I was. I, 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 it's like I me. said it at the beginning of the no, conversation. No, no I will. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I stole a purse, and I got enough money that I could, we could go on this trip. Yeah. And uh, the, the whole thing is, is, at that age, I had no idea about karma and all that stuff. We get yeah. down. What happens? We get down there. I buy some weed. And we get caught in friggin' parking lot of Disneyland, fucking rolling weed, and they kick us out. Now you can't even go to grad night because you got busted in the car parking lot. And they call my mom, who I just told, "Fuck you, I'm moving out." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm so, it was just a big chaotic mess. But then the whole thing is, so we go and get a hotel room, and I'm sitting at the hotel room, and I'm like, I didn't fucking, fucking get an apartment, move out, steal a purse, drive all the way here to get caught, to get kicked out, and told that I'm not going. That ain't happening. So I was like, how are we gonna get in? And uh, I go, I know the Disneyland hotel's got the monorail. That way we don't have to go in the front door where security is. And so we're going to go to the hotel. We're going to get in there and we're going to get 
into Disneyland on the monorail from the hotel, oh. takes us in, drops us in. Now once we're in, you know, there's nothing but 50,000 friggin' high school students. They're going to pick us out. Yeah. And we went. Oh, <laughs> success. Yes. I love the success. <laughs> That's great. Happy but, you ending. Know, well, it was, but, you know, it's those things you look back on. But anyways, from that experience, my friend who who went with me uh, had tried to do a few things and got caught and ended up in prison. <laughs> and so for a while there, I felt like, man, I can't, you know, I finally figured out. No, this ain't, you know, it, it, actually when I went through Narconon and stuff, I learned at that point I never steal. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just, it, if it ain't mine, it it's ain't not mine. yours. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'd, I'm, if they ain't going to loan it to me, I ain't stealing it. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't I'll need do this it. shit anyways. You don't need any of this shit, right? No, like no. you got food, water and shelter. You have more than like half the fucking world at this point. You're exactly. doing great. Right. And it's like uh, people get caught up in all these material things, you know, all no, it's all an illusion, man. You know, and you come up in this fucking society of consumerism and they're just like, bye, bye, bye. You got to have the newest shit. Even like our fucking cell phones, right? They like break themselves. So you have to buy one every two fucking fucking years right that's it's a joke like it's it's what our whole economy is based well, on every every product i mean it's like a, with with any product they sell you the bare minimum and then all the aftermarket stuff that makes it your own oh yeah uh, is what costs the money <laughs> you know, this the initial down payment is this so you so right now we just found a new thing we want to do is we want to do those side by sides razors and can ams okay out in the desert oh my god we're talking you want to talk about having a good time yeah Oh, a blast. You should fucking invite me to go do that because that sounds like fun. Okay. <laughs> do you know Jamie? Jamie Patillo? I don't know. Maybe. I got to see faces. I'm terrible with fucking names, Okay. Man. Well, anyways, he's opening a company, and um, they take you out on tours okay. from his house. He lives right at the corner of Avery and Blue Diamond Road. Okay. That's where that log cabin is. If Like, if you're going to Pahrump, if you look on your right, after, right after you pass the gas station there on Blue Diamond, yeah, he lives right there in that log cabin. Oh, so but it's Jamie's business. Yeah. See, so he's this is, got five of these things, yeah. and, and he takes you out on tours, and he'll let you drive them, or you can just ride along, however you want to do it. And they go all through the desert, and they have he has like a three bar tour where you can go to like um, you go out to Good Springs and go to the Pioneer Club. Okay. And then you go from there, you go to Sandy Valley, and I forget what the name of the uh, something Spurs or some shit Saddle and Spurs or some shit out yeah. in Sandy Valley. And then you go from there and you go to Mountain Springs to, um, what's the name of the bar at Mountain Springs? I can't remember what the name of the <laughs> damn thing is. Um, and, and you hit the three bars and then you never touch the road. Oh, that's fun. It's all off, and it's just beautiful out there. And, you know, when you're doing 35, 40 miles an hour across the desert, it's badass, especially when the suspension on these things, you think they're going to freaking beat the hell out of you, and the suspension is just amazing in these machines. But so you buy one, they cost 30 grand. Yeah. And then you got to put another 15 in it just to get the stuff so that you don't destroy it when you're out there. <laughs> you you got to put skid plates on, front yeah. bumper, rear bumper, a roof, just all this different stuff, mirrors. I mean, it doesn't even come with the bare essentials. It's just a motor, a tranny, some tires, and a frame, you oh, know? Oh, really? <laughs> and then anything to make it your, yours and custom, you have to, it's all aftermarket shit, and it just costs tons and tons. And everything that we do is set up to perpetuate itself that way. Every industry, SEMA. You know, the next big show that's coming to Vegas that we'll finally get back to work on is all aftermarket, aftermarket car parts, you know. Yeah. Is SEMA coming back? Yes, yes, oh, yes. That's the so only we one. got so October uh, into November, we're going to have a little bit of work back yep, in town. Yep. Oh, that's so good to hear, man. I, yep. The only one I've heard of is CES coming back. Yep, CES. Well, I had uh, I had somebody call me today, matter of fact, and say, hey, I heard CES got canceled. Here's this, this, this. And I said, well, I had one of the main bosses at Freeman at my house yesterday and he didn't mention it. He would have told me that there was no CES this year. And uh, so he didn't say that. And I said, well, here, let me just look it up. And I, we, Diane looked it up, and we looked on the Internet and said right there, no CES is happening in 2020. I mean. Yeah, I saw an article about it. Well, dur today. during the during this whole pandemic, uh, the convention, the new convention center, the construction never stopped. At all. I didn't no. see it stop, yeah. No, it did the not The stadium's stop. almost done. Well, the stadium didn't stop, but yeah, neither did like, the convention center. So. Yeah, they've been doing construction everywhere. Right. And so um, they're looking. Somebody said they're going to try and put SEMA in there. I don't see SEMA, but I definitely see CES being in there for 2021. Yeah. Um, the new convention center opening, so. 
that's that's where my plans are at right like i'm just trying to make it through i was just talking about this literally this morning with my homie uh uh which is uh yeah like i just i'm trying to have whatever i have right now get me through the end of the year and make it to february when i can cash my cement my ces check right, right. it's just like if i can get to there right like i will all survive you're gonna survive but anyways i'll fucking be fine <laughs> I'll be fine. Hey, I got what, what, a, I got a sugar mama over there. Just there you fucking, go. you know. <laughs> uh, hopefully, unemployment will start kicking in eventually. Uh, well, yeah. See, I like I said, I, I I'm I'm very blessed and got got lucky on that. I I planned on taking off some time just before this thing happened. Yeah. And so I was already on unemployment. Oh, and nice. So I didn't have to worry about the the madness, but my my claim did end right in the middle of that, and I had to refile was a little stressful for a second, but I've, I, like, this whole thing hasn't touched me very much. Um, I'm not making what I normally do. I'd rather be at work, yeah. but if they're going to pay me to sit at home, I'm going to sit here till they say go back to work. And, you know, I, I'm, I, I moved back to Las Vegas only because I, I'm 60. I got two more years and I'm going to take my retirement. And my You're not going to push it to 68 or whatever? No, I'm not going to 67. I'm not, is it 67? For me, yeah, it's full retirement, Social Security. And Why not? It's five more years. Uh, because I've been doing this 43 years, Jason. I've worked at a local 720 for 43 years. Yeah. And I've been through every regime, up and down and sideways. And I, I, it's, part, it's my family. I, yeah. I can't say that I, I, when I'm away, that I don't mi I miss the people, but I don't miss the politics of the job. Yeah. The politics of the job really sucks, especially when you get into super, being a supervisor and, and in management and stuff. I hate being a supervisor. You know? I mean, I like, I, like, I like the role, right? Like, you're like, oh, I'm kind of like, it's less physical work, and you're kind of taking care of a lot of things at once, which is interesting. But it's like, ah, man, unless, the, unless my crew's, like, willing to work with me, I'm not, I, when motherfuckers are, like, not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and right. you got to, like, be, like, disciplinary or whatever, I just, uh, I, it's, I, I shouldn't be there, right? Like, I know better because I, I, A, don't give a fuck, and B, if you're rude to me, right? Like, I'm like, I have this, I might snap or something and just, like, be real for a second. And, you know, you can't be real on a corporate fucking site. Well, no, you, you, can't, uh, you can't do that to the client because you won't yeah, be there. You won't be there. You'll get fired. So I'm just like, <laughs> so I always go through with the attitude of, like, I, you know, I really don't fucking care. You know, walk all over me. Like, they're going to do it anyways, right? And it's just like, so when you put, it's like, that's a good spot to be. Tell me what to do. Tell me what you want. I don't give a shit. You want me to put the fucking speakers in the corners facing away from the audience? If that's what the fucking diagram says, I don't care. You know, this is your show. And like, and, uh, cause you know, that's what? been great for me. That works so well. <laughs> you know, that attitude, like, I, cause when I went in, it was, uh, uh, it was like I cared and like I'd be like oh my god well, nothing this isn't how you do this and it's just like you got to get rid of that attitude uh, it's just crazy out there you know it's 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 rough for me because I sometimes carry I, I, I don't know if I say sometimes a lot of times I carry um, the experience that I have from the job into my personal life yeah where where as a supervisor where I get idiots and I have to micromanage them if I don't micromanage them, then shit goes south. And but when you're given a good team, and yeah. you know your players, and they listen to you when you say, well, the whole thing something. is, is if you've got a good enough team, you, they don't even have. You can tell them what the end task is, yeah, and then walk away. It's. It's when you're getting a bunch of these greenies out there that don't know anything yeah. and you have to worry about safety because that's always on everybody's mind. And so the, the main thing is, is it's just I carry it over and I and it's hard for me not to to because <laughs> I'm passionate about my job. So then when I have situations that come up that are similar. It just drives me crazy, and I react yeah. as if I would at work. And I'm like, you idiot! You showed up without your tools, or you know, you know the stuff. You're an adult. You're making forty thir between thirty and forty dollars an hour. That's more than everybody else is making out there yeah. that has a normal job. Okay? Give a shit, please. Right. At, at least give me the benefit of the doubt. Show up that you want to be here and that you got the tools to do the job that you took. Yeah, because they call you and they tell you what job it is, and if you're not qualified, tell them no, I'm not qualified. And don't have the guy that's trying to get something done have to do your job. Because yeah. for me, if you're in a management position, you should be able to do almost every job on your on your crew. 
That's how I like to do it. I mean, um, if I'm in charge of something, I'll do it. With, I do. I lead by example, right? Like right. I'm push and I push cases. I do all the worst parts of the job, right? right. So it's like, hey, we got to push all these fucking cases. I'll grab the cable trunk and go. Let's fucking go, guys. You know, like, uh, well, th- and that that kind of shit helps, right? A lot. Well, as a, as a manager, you can't ask anybody to do something that you wouldn't do yourself. Yeah. You know, even the shittiest of jobs to the best of jobs, and the ones that I that that I can't do because I don't have the technical knowledge or the physical strength to do, those are the ones I get the people that have that. Yeah. That's what makes you a manager is knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are and build a team around you that makes you look good. And the whole thing is, is then give them the credit. Yeah. All you, the credit you want to take is I built the team. The team did the work. They did it. I didn't do it. I just built the team. And that's how a manager should be. But if one team player falls out, you need to be able to step in and make that that wheel still spin. Oh yeah. You know, it's yeah. the people that, that, that are wandering around the safety people and the supervisors that don't know your job, have no idea what you do, but yet want to tell you how to do it. They're looking at a clipboard and says, well, this here says you're not doing it right. <laughs> well, what do you know? Yeah, you don't <laughs> even know how to do my fucking job. <laughs> exactly. Have you ever done this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and especially in a technical field like we're in, right? It's yeah. like, there's a lot of specifics and everything is, uh, a personal thing of like 25 years of experience that you've been doing, right? So there's, you can't, it's like audio, right? It's like, it's like a fucking, it's a dark art. We're manipulating the sound in the air, the, the air particles, right? We're just like fucking pushing waves with magnets. Uh, and everybody has their own little flavor, their own little techniques of ways to do things. Uh, and there's no one way to like fucking get there. I mean, there is one way, right? That you can just say uh, input to uh, output matrix and fucking bring the fucking fader up, right? But then everybody's <laughs> got all their other little flavors that they throw in there with right. either their dynamics or their fucking routing techniques and shit like that and, and uh yeah it's uh yeah there's just you go back to analog and i can talk with you this whole digital world uh, as far as digital audio i i like having an outboard rack i love having an outboard rack <laughs> uh, i don't like moving it i don't like, I don't like moving hooking it. it all up well most I of the rack kind of like hooking it most up. of the racks hooked up you just have to plug it in once you get there you know it's it's there but to be able to when you need a compression or you need a gate or you need uh, some echo or you need, it's easier to just go, uh, yeah. As opposed to, okay, menu, 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 oh shit. You know, I just, that's like, it's, it's, it's the new thing, right? It is. I trust me. I've tried to learn it a couple times and it seems because I'm a lead rigger that every time I get into the audio class that, um, and at this time I was working for PRG and I'd get in there and they'd yank me out of the frigging class to go run some job for them. Oh God. You know? And so I learn a little bit. I know a little bit, but you know, it's like when I tried to learn the whole hog, I learned enough to get myself in a lot of trouble. <laughs> the lights, you'll do that. Yeah. You know, do I know how to do program that? everything? Well, but, but once again, as a supervisor, you need to be able to do some stuff. Yeah. If, if you're the first person there and the last one to leave, you need to be able to at least bring the faders up and bring some lights up, turn them down, you know, know something. Don't stand around and wait for everybody, you know. Absolutely. And yeah. so in my field, I mean, I started in audio. That's how I started because my uncle owned a recording studio and I learned, I went to school and became an, a, an A1 and I did all that stuff. That's what I wanted to do. And um, then I got into the stagehand union and so that's what I started. And when you first start, you only, back when I started, you didn't get in as anything other than a carpenter. And you did two years as a carpenter. You did rather, didn't care that I had an A1 cert. I, I was an A1 at that point and couldn't get for two years no A1 jobs. Jesus. <laughs> I had to be a carpenter. Then after that, they said, you can get your electrics card and we'll train you. So I got my electrics card. That was another two years. Then I was able to get into audio. <laughs> just crazy stuff the way it's changed now. People just yeah. come in. Now everybody, the people that get in the easiest are already um, have that skill set of that job. Yeah, that's how I got in. Right. But you already you, know, you, you already knew audio. Yeah. It was like, oh, you can do audio engineering. Well, I need you to come over here and do it, but I need you to have a union ID. Can you get that taken care of? And I was like, yeah, I'll be back. And, I, you know, like a year later or whatever. It takes a while. Right. right? No, but uh, then I just like, I was like, don't give me any fucking cards. I was like, just 
audio engineer, right? Like just the A1 or this uh, uh, head sound card, right? It's yeah. like, that's all I want to do. Just, I just want to get really good at this one thing because I, I, me personally, I think that's the fucking way to go, right? You get right. really good at one niche thing and you just get up, 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 up onto the, like the big shows, man. Right. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to like being able, I can do everything. And it's like, well, yeah, you're going to be in fucking breakout rooms your whole life doing everything. Well, th- there's that. There's so because I've been in the union for so long, it's that I've gone through my different phases of what I've done, and I've finally, after doing most of them, I have settled into rigging. Because yeah, exactly. Rigging makes the most money. Yeah, well, um, it's dangerous. Well, it's dangerous, but it's also the um, trade that changes the least. Our equipment is still the same. Yeah. <laughs> Forty-three <laughs> years later, it's a chain motor, <laughs> some uh, shackles, yeah, you know, some deck chain, and some steel. Okay. You know, redesign that shit and a button. You know, well, there the is pickles change. Right, the pickles but get I mean, but they have automated motors that you can program and all that stuff if you yeah. want to go there. But for the most part, there hasn't been too many technological changes. Yeah, physics uh, are physics. You yeah. know, and. As long as you're safe and you follow the guidelines to be safe, you can hang a rig, yeah. you know. And, you know, I've done two motor, one motor stuff all the way up to 100 motor moves, you know, where you got 100 chain motors going at once. <laughs> and the whole North Hall shakes. <laughs> That's awesome. You know? Yeah, I've seen those big grids go up. Yeah, That's no, no I mean, joke. Yeah, it's, it's awesome when you, when, and especially when you've gotten to a point to where you're the guy that gets to do that. You get to push the button. Yeah, but the whole thing is, is a lot of people don't realize the responsibility that comes with pushing that button. Well, yeah, everybody um, saw that picture of that video wall that came down. Exactly, and, you know, and the, the words, the rumors and stuff, and, you know, having been in this, I, I looked at it and I, I said, that's called operator error. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, of course. It well, didn't fucking go up there by itself. It was in cases when it was on the truck and then people grabbed it and then it fell. Well, it was up for the show and on the down. Yeah. Uh, the person that was on the buttons, yeah. I'm sure, bounced the rig. The The rig was stressed because of the way that they decided to... To put a strand vice in in line with a turnbuckle it makes yeah. no sense to me, but they did it. Um, was it wrong? What was wrong is the person that did the load calcs didn't um, do them. They they didn't do the the number that they needed. They they yeah. cheated on it. Yeah. And so when the person on the buttons hit the button, now you got seven thousand pounds moving. Stop. And it goes. <laughs> the whole rig goes right but the whole thing is is when it goes cocoon if you don't let it settle and you hit it again now you've just created a dynamic load yeah. and now that dynamic load what those ratings on those on those strand vices were just got shot out the window yeah because most people don't put the dynamic load on there yeah. and so if you don't know that you don't bounce a rig then that's called operator error and that's in my opinion don't know all the details, but just first glance and what little bit I do know, to me that would be why that happened. That that video all came down is because somebody double sure. double bounced the rig and created a dynamic load on that strand vice, and then you got the zipper. Jeez. Yeah, it's terrifying, right? Oh, and just, it's like literally the guy pushed a button wrong. Well, he you pushed know. it once and pushed it twice before he let it settle. Yeah, and that's the the weight that's on our shoulders when we're at these operating positions. It's right. literally you push one wrong fucking button. And you can kill somebody. And you can kill somebody or a lot of people, yeah. Or like in my case, I could deafen everybody, right? And, you know, well, but like, the whole thing is, is I mean, even you, I, I, I know most lead technicians, they hang their, their own PA. Yeah, I do. You know, and so, you know, yeah, they usually have a rigger there with them. Oh, definitely. Just, you know. In a union gig, it is, and most non-union gigs, no. Yeah. <laughs> just audio running free and lighting running free and whoever, you know, and it just happens. But uh, yeah, There's usually a rigger or somebody well, there, though. Like, I don't even... On a big rig, but I'm just saying, if you're in a ballroom yeah. hanging your PA all day long, you can hang that. Yeah, I, I do just clip it onto trust sometimes myself. Right, you know. But I'm paranoid shit about that, too. Like, well, I, as long on, as I make sure that ain't going nowhere. I ain't going to kill nobody. The whole thing is, is if you know what the the rating of the equipment is that you're using to hang it yeah and you know how much your stuff is that you're hanging and you know and trust the equipment there's not an issue yeah just be safe make sure that that we have redundancies built in and safety's 
built on in everything that we do. And so if you follow that, there'll never be an accident. You know, I'm, I can knock on wood here. I've been very, very fortunate in my 43 years of, of rigging that I haven't had any accidents. I've had close calls, but, you know, the whole thing is, is when when you have when you're doing a move or anything like that you have other crew members say, hey i need eyes because you, your eyes cannot be everywhere on a big rig at once so you have people up in the air looking and the word is stop you know and yeah. bam stop okay we avoided that now what do we need to do to get by us that and there's just all kinds of things and if you stick to those rules you won't have those accidents yeah it's just a lot of these young kids come up today they don't they they're given these jobs and responsibilities and they haven't had the experience yet to where um, you take a graduation and, and gradually get to where you can push the button on a huge video wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. He probably wasn't thinking or got distracted. Maybe he did know. I don't know. I don't know the guy that well. And yeah. it's uh, there's many things that could have happened. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's scary though. It's oh. it's scary out there what we do, man, and uh, and people die every year. Well, uh, that, that, that's a, as a lead rigger, the the main thing is is like for there was probably three to five years there where we had a bunch of those ground support systems coming down two three a year, you know. Yeah. And taking people out in the audience or in in the, on the uh, the act or whatever is getting crushed by the lights coming in and <laughs> just all that stuff, and it's because one the whoever's in charge didn't understand the responsibility of being in charge because yeah. when you've got a ground support system and that wind you know what your wind rating is on that system at least you should as the lead rigger on it you should know what the wind shear is on any of your equipment yeah and when the wind speeds start getting up that you've got to be able to go to the producer and tell him you don't have a show yeah. i'm bringing the roof down you have to and if you don't then that's when people get hurt and the producer is going to yell and scream and everything else and say listen i'm going to bring it down we'll wait yeah i'm not saying we're going home i'm saying i'm bringing it down it's not going to kill everybody right and if it if it if it calms down we take it back up we do the show it's postponed but i'm telling you right now as the lead rigger this is coming in yeah and a lot of them don't have the balls to do that you have to cuz it costs a lot of money to cancel a show after you've spent all that money to put it up. Yeah. And all those people paid for tickets and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. It man. is. And a lot of people are given that responsibility that don't realize what that responsibility is or are just, you know, reckless. Yeah. I personally don't want nothing to do with all that shit, man. Like, uh, I like to mix my audio and let you guys be responsible for fucking all the stuff hanging in the air. It's, that's, it's an ideal situation for me, that's for sure. Well, I mean, it, it, but it, it, when you get into that position, we just did that big thing out there for that uh, aircraft show out at uh, North Las Vegas, or uh, Henderson Airport, all those jets and everything. We got to do a big, huge reveal, an automated reveal of this new um, jet. The new Raptors? No, it was the uh, um, Gulfstream. Oh, okay. The new G750. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, Gangster. Uh, yeah, but uh, they wanted to do like an automated thing, and so we built this huge thing that covered this fuselage of this jet, and each section of it collapsed into each self, and each one of those sections had a huge video wall attached to it, so it all, it was, it was bitching. And, you know, those are stuff that riggers get to do, you know? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah you, we need audio, but that thing was the first time that anything oh, yeah. of that magnitude had been done and that shit's, to that do shit's a reveal epic. yeah and they spent a shit ton of money you know these corporations come out and spend tons and tons of friggin money for i mean the event lasted 45 minutes they probably spent two million dollars for a 45 minute reveal Right, and you guys were probably out there for like three or four days building oh, it all. It, it took more. It took us a week and a half. Did it take you a week and a half? I'll show you the pictures afterwards on my you. phone of the of the size of this structure. Yeah. It was just amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, you guys get to do some cool stuff, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I totally respect what you guys fucking do. It's it's intense, man. It's really well, I mean, intense. For, for for a year, I can't say. I worked for Celine for three years, but she only flew the first year that I worked for her, and that was my job, was to fly her during the show. And uh, oh, Okay. That, you know, we had to go through her insurance company because she's insured for God amount of money. And so they wanted to know what all the contingencies were that we were going to do in any type of emergency and this and that. And it was kind because, you know, at the end of her number, we would fly her 70 feet up into the grid like in three seconds. Oh, wow. 
gone, you know. And so we had to make sure cables weren't crossed, all kinds of shit. And then she'd go up there and somebody had to be up there to receive her so that they could unclip her. She could do her costume change and just all this shit. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, that's huge responsibility. So for me, it's like, you know, I've done the high end stuff. I've done the low end stuff. But it's it's still what I love about this profession is that I don't have to answer to a boss. If I don't want to work, I don't take the next gig. I love that about it, too. You know, and I don't ever have to say, can I have the day off? If I don't want to work, I don't work. If I need the work, I chase the freaking jobs, you know? You know what's great about that, too, is when you're at work, right, and knowing that I accepted this job and I'm thankful to have it, you know, like the attitude's a little different. It's like, oh, sweet, gig coming up. I'm going to make some money. You know, I'm fucking stoked. Got some fucking work. It's not like, oh, another Monday, five more fucking days of this nightmare that I live forever. Well, it's every, every show's different. You know, yeah. some stuff is, gets re- repetitious, but for the most part, every show, it, it, even if you're doing the same client, something's different. It's not the same. They're trying something new. There's some new technology. There's some new design idea, you know, and just all people's minds, you know, yeah. the, the coming of all these minds together creates the show. And it's, it's interesting to watch the design teams. <laughs> got to one up last year. Got to do better than last year. Right. Well, it's got to be bigger. It's, even, sometimes even, it's got to be cheaper, but still look bigger. Right. Or sometimes, oh, we got, we got to spend all the budget or we don't get the money next year. So. Those are the best ones. <laughs> stand by to stand by. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I had so much double time this week. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, that's it's it's fucking great. Now I love that part about it too, with the uh, the corporate fucking uh, tax write off incentive, right? It's just like let's throw a big fucking party so we don't got to pay a bunch of taxes. And well, like, unless yeah. o- unless Obama comes on the news and says don't go to Vegas, yeah, that bullshit. <laughs> oh my god, I couldn't I'm believe like, that. I'm like, uh, did our president just say that on national TV? Don't go to Vegas. Unbelievable, man. Uh, the, does he realize what the economy is here? Yeah, it's literally <laughs> yeah. like it's, it's if people are flying here to spend their fucking savings on a party, then the, we die. <laughs> There's no farms or anything out here, man. There's like one mine, like fucking fifty miles away. We're fucked. Like they're in the yeah. middle of the desert. Yeah, it's, it's like, all we have. We entertain bit. people, <laughs> right? Well, either yeah, it's an adult playground. Yeah, it's friggin' awesome, man. Is what yeah. it is. Well, I love. I love it. I see. I was born and raised here. Yeah, we had. We had all the tourists You're came here, but now, now they, now they don't go home. Yeah. <laughs> See, before they all came here and went home, now they all want to live here. It's like what? You've destroyed my nice little valley. I know. Let's build. Let's build more houses closer to Red Rock, uh, right? Well, even besides that, I mean that that really infuriates me. There's a lot of things. I mean, as a kid, I, I, I the Red Rocks were my playground. Yeah, it's beautiful. And there was I had no restrictions, and. Then the restrictions start coming in. It's like, oh, what did I do? Why am I losing the privilege that I've had my whole life? Now I got to pay to get in here, and it's a one-way road. It used to be a two-way road where I could camp anywhere I wanted. You could camp out there? Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be so tight to camp oh, out there. Oh, I camped. When I was 14 years old, my mom would take me, Tom, and Doug, and a few kids. On Friday after school, we'd get out of school on Friday. They'd take us up to the Red Rocks, drop us off, and pick us up on Sunday. <laughs> We'd spend the whole weekend out there drinking, smoking, climbing. That's how I learned to rock climb, you know? That's, That's fantastic. You know, it was awesome back then. But there was nobody up there. There was nobody to harm us. There was, you know, we had to make sure we didn't get bit by a snake or fall off a cliff, you know? Or my friend who hit himself in the hand with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just stupid uh, shit when you're out there. But, you know, we, we had a blast. When we, one time, this uh, one of our friends, Denny, came out and his dad, because we first started getting into rappelling, and uh, we hooked up a rope over this cliff and stuff, and this guy's dad's like, oh, no, I'll go, I'll, I'll walk down the cliff holding on hand over hand. And we're like, no, no, no. And he falls 80 feet, breaks his <gasps> collarbone. Oh, the shit, we're, he's lucky he didn't die. I know, but we told him no, but, I mean, it's just... This guy thought he could hand hand over hand down a, a rope off a cliff, and I'm like, no, you got to run that through a device. You don't have the strength to hold yourself up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And sure enough, he hit the ground. I'm going rappelling soon, uh, yeah. and so what it is is it's a it's like a clamp, right? Well, that's that holds a, the pol- the pulley lets loose a little bit, and you can slide well, down. That's with a it. that's a Gregory. Okay, it's a, called a Gregory. That that device that you're explaining to me right now is called a Gregory. That is. It's okay. Okay. Most devices that you use for repelling, the first one that you should relearn before you learn on a Grigory is a figure eight. Uh, 
You should learn how to rappel on a figure eight first. Then Which is just a, you're talking about just a knot. No, it's it's a device. Okay. It looks like an eight. It's got a small a small circle and a big circle. And you run the you fold the rope in half, you run the end through the big circle and you capture the small circle at the top and that's hooked into a beaner and that's what creates your friction. Okay on the rope so that you can control your speed going down the rope. So that's what you should learn how to do first is on a figure eight. Then the next device you should learn how to use is called an ATC or an air traffic controller, which takes two, takes your rope as it's doubled over and puts two of them through around a beaner to create your friction. Then after that, you should learn how to use a Gregory. The Gregory is the shortcut, but you should learn all the basics before you go to the shortcut. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that you know the danger of what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's scary stuff. I'm oh, like, yeah. I'm, no, I'm, there's, I there's got certain, vertigo. I'm, I'm fucking, I have problems whole, with heights. It's well, going to be fun. But the whole thing is, Jason, as you learn to trust your equipment and know how to use the equipment and trust it, then you will lose that fear because you know you're good. Yeah. It's when you don't know is when your mind <laughs> tells you, uh, uh, this ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it comes and... It, it's really easy, and rappelling is the first thing. If you look at the stati statistically wise, as far as rock climbers and adventurers and stuff, the majority of the people that die die on the the descent. Yeah. Okay, that's coming down. The descent is coming down, and rappelling is because anchors fail. There's all kinds of different goofy things. People most of the time, most people just rappel off the end of the rope, and they're not to the bottom yet, and they die because they fall the rest of the way. Oh wow! It's just crazy. The shit. The, I mean, one of the first things you do when you're doing full rappels. Tie the ends of the rope together. Tie a knot at the end. Then throw it over. Yeah. That way when you get to the end, you're at the end and you're not going to fall off because you're not. It's going to stop you. Yeah. That's there's, a good idea. There's no brain fart. There's no nothing. But the whole thing is when you're learning, Jason, what the, how I would teach you is I'd take you to this boulder up in Sandstone Quarry. Uh -huh. I'd hook up the thing and then I'll put you on the rappel. Then I'll come to the bottom. When the rope is hanging down, if you panic or anything and I've got a hold of the rope, as long as the rope is running through that device and you panic or have get caught or anything, I can pull on the rope and stop you and you won't fall. Oh, cool. So there's safety that, you know, when you're being taught, if somebody doesn't teach make sure that somebody puts the safety mechanism when they're teaching you if they're yeah. just that's all <laughs> yeah oh, you probably know the, uh, my, my buddy Donnie Harden uh, yeah I know Donnie Harden very well yeah yeah he worked for, he worked for me for quite a few years at the Rio yeah he's he's been in the union forever he's the re, he's how I, I got, got in him, the I, union I got him in the union did you get Donnie in the union yes I did so you you're my union granddaddy bro <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no I got Donnie Harden in working for me over at the Rio oh that's so cool yeah he's the one who got me in I I, I, I dated his daughter for a really long time we're still friends I mean I mean, me and Donnie okay. are good friends yeah, so we're gonna go out and fucking repel and then I want now I want to repel with you too though okay I, I've yeah. got all the gear so tight but uh yeah Donnie's Do Donnie's actually a better uh uh, rafting guide, river guide. Yeah, he's really into the rafting yeah. and the wildlife. I so, love Donnie. He's so great. Yeah. One day we were doing uh, what we were doing. We were doing um, uh, State Farm. We do State Farm over at Thomas and Mac usually every four years. And one year we're doing it, and they were really sticklers about being late because it's a huge show, and only the top, the cream of the crop, get to work it and all this shit. And so one day we're having, I, I pull in in a freaking torrential downpour comes at the Thomas and Mac and I'm telling you the whole parking lot is four inches in deep of water and I'm like I gotta get in there oh my god <laughs> I can't work in soggy feet all day <laughs> I got no change of shoes or socks nothing take your pants off and I'm like fuck so I just Fuck it, jump in the water and took off run. I get down there, my feet are soggier than shit. I got no dry socks. I'm fucking wringing my socks out and shit. Fucking Donnie shows up with a fucking dry pair of socks and a pair of shoes for me. Oh, what a stud. I'm like, where the fuck? I'm like, Donnie, thank you. That's I was awesome. like, unfucking believable. <laughs> yeah, man. He had an extra pair of dry socks and friggin' uh, shoes that fit me. I was like, oh, you are a lifesaver. <laughs> Yeah, he's a fucking man. He's a really good person. Oh, man. he's a great guy. Great guy. Oh. He, you know, like because I've known him for a long time, and you know, he, he had his issues back when, when he was going through, I guess, uh, personal 
relationship problems and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, probably but, like the divorce and everything. Well, uh, he's had a few of them. But yeah. <laughs> I've known Donnie a while, so. Yeah. But uh, good guy, good guy, all, all in all. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, no, so we're going to go have fun out in the... Uh, on the desert climbing and hopefully we go river rafting. No, I'm going, I got a bunch of GoPros. Yeah. So we're going to film it all on GoPro. I'm going to put yeah. it on the channel and then we're going to bring them on and do like a podcast and like awesome. hold the videos up. Like I have the laptop hooked up to the screen and everything. So that's kind of going to be, uh, I'm trying to make that kind of the format, right. Of the show too. Like not, not like for every episode, but just for like specialized episodes, a little more right. interesting. There'll be, two videos right there'll be like the adventure video and then the podcast post adventure where we discuss okay. what's happening awesome. and then we also go back to that video and we can kind of like you know talk about it while we're on okay and um and like your friend with the um with the desert racing uh -huh. stuff man yeah. like we should totally hook up i could put like gopros on all the ra on well, all the cars just so you know that he's a video guy jamie jamie, jamie. is he a video guy oh, oh yeah. okay so, so he probably isn't as, as op to like the no but maybe he, no, he would it. no he no yeah. i'm just saying yeah he'd be totally into it and he might okay. have a bunch of the gear Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, we should, uh, like, that's, uh, I would love to, like, do an episode and, like, go out and race and, like, film it all and oh, yeah. cut, like, a five, ten minute video up of just, like, us having fun well, in he, the desert. Yeah. And then we can do, bring him on. He can do the podcast. He can, you know, promote his business and everything yeah, like that. I think it's called, um, what is it? Razor Adventure. Desert Splendor the Adventure. Yeah. De oh, so it's Desert, D Z R T. Okay. Because that's, I guess, that's those, those, uh, those razors. That's how they spell it, R Z T or something. Desert, huh? With yeah, D, a Z? D Z R T, Desert Adventure. No, Desert. desert Splendor. Oh, yeah, Desert Splendor, The Adventure. Ah, oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> I'm sure. I'll, uh, let's see. We'll just type it into Google and see. I'll pull his page up for him, even. Yeah, I don't think he has a page yet. It's, it's, it's still. Oh really? Yeah, it's still it's still in the making. But he's got five of these machines. He's got a one of the guys on his staff is a professional racer, okay, and mechanic that will do all the upkeep on them. And uh, so far, it's 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 going to be a great thing. I mean, Diane had a blast. You know, what I mean, for me to spend six hours hauling across the friggin' desert at 30, 40, 50 miles an hour over all this stuff. And by the time you get done, I mean, you are friggin' pumped oh, I from bet. holding on to that machine. And, you know, you, you, the terrain out there is so diverse. I mean, you could be going, f falling down a, uh, flying down a dirt road and all of a sudden drop into a wash and then around some corners and up some whippy. And it just changes all the time. And you got to be on it because if you're, you don't pay attention, you can, you can one destroy the machine or hurt yourself or ro roll it. There's just so you gotta you know pay attention. It's it's awesome. it's fun. She's holding on for dear life. They got the old shit bar, you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's holding on. Eh, oh shit! Oh shit! Uh, that's <laughs> funny, man. But yeah, that any of that stuff you want to do adventure wise, I'm totally into, Jason. Uh, yeah, let's uh, go adventuring. Man. You know, for um, for quite a few years, I was training and certifying all the guys that do the window washing and put those big magnets up on the side to like the MGM, all that stuff. Oh, really? Well, they have to be certified of through course. their company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so I was, I, what I would do is I would teach them all how to repel, how to do self self rescue, all that kind of stuff. And then I would take them up to the Red Rocks and actually have them do it here your guy have your guy hanging here i'll tie him off and you're going to rappel down to him and rescue him that's you know, awesome and do all that stuff that's all practical stuff that they would have to be certified to get through the class and it was awesome to be able to teach these guys this stuff so that when they're hanging on the sides of these skyscrapers um and the wind comes up or their rigging fails or something they know what to do or with these guys that work like at yesco sign company and stuff they get inside these big signs if they get shocked from the electricity because that's all high voltage yeah. in there you know that's not like you know little lights that's all big neon high voltage shit and so they can be hurt inside that sign and then their buddy's got to go in there and rescue them and you know the main thing is they got to know what the procedure is the the main thing that you teach these guys that are working at heights is that you want to one secure the person and two the first thing you need to do is get them to the ground where they can get help yeah because there's nothing that they can do up here so let's get them to the ground whatever it is if you got to clip them off to you and you repel in however that is you know um because of my training, I remember, what is it, uh, when we came into, two, was it 2000 or 2001 over at the MGM, they hired a bunch of us to do this, like, James Bond skit. And we got to do what, the, what they call European repel, you know, from your back. Okay. Out of the, out of the rafters at the, 
at the uh, MGM over there. Like where they run down the side of the building uh, and shit all spy uh, style? Yeah. So we got to do all that. There was like 10 of us, and then we run around the thing, and it was just all kind of cool and shit. You know? But those are stuff when you have those fun. type of skills yeah. that because of the industry that we're in, that you can fall into those spots. You go, oh, you know how to do that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Boom. As a rigger, that's yeah. That's tight. You know, and so... You got to teach me how to do some of that stuff. That's cool. Any day. Yeah. Any day you want to go out. I do. All right. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll plan for something in like September. <laughs> well, there's pl- there's places to go. You can go you can go up to uh, Mount Charleston where it's not as hot. That's true. Mount Charleston there's, would be nice in yeah, the summer. There, there's all kinds of places to go that you don't have to be in the 115 degrees. Well, let's plan on something sooner then. Okay. Yeah, That'd be we'll awesome. I really want to start doing some of these now that now that like. People aren't confined to their fucking houses and stuff, like, and businesses are starting to open up again. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to start doing these more adventure-driven um, videos I'm all, and I'm podcasts. All, I'm all about it. So I'm gonna. We th- can do shooting. We can do all kinds of different yeah? adventure stuff. Yeah, I love shooting. Yeah, no, we, yeah. Jamie, the same guy. Yeah, tons of guns. Oh, Ton- I love shooting. When we when we went the other day, we went the other day. Uh, <laughs> We're out four wheeling. We stopped by his cabin. He's got a cabin out that's out off of uh, out by Mount Potosi, and uh, we get there and he's got these. Uh, I think they're German like three oh eight rifles, mm. and they hold like five shells. And so he's like, "Okay, here, let's fire these off and set up the targets." And it's it's like a big whole adventure thing. He's nice. So yeah, I, we got to get Jamie involved. We get you guys get you to meet Jamie, and uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah, but just, we'll we'll give you a bunch of training. I do. That's I mean, what I it's all about. I, like, I, I don't know what Donnie's schedule. I haven't talked to him in a bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah. He's. I think he split town for a little while. Whenever the virus you, hit, and he's if getting he, back into town. Now. Is he in Texas? I think he went to Texas for a little bit. Like, but when shit went down, he was like out camping and fucking, you know, right, getting yeah. away from society. And then he's coming back now. Okay. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna get together with him and go do that thing. And yeah, I want to get together with you. Well, if you want to go thing. and repel, learn to repel any any day, I just we can go up and I'll set up a, a top rope and teach you on all of them. Talk I've got all the devices. We can do that. I'll even take you know we can get Diane to nice. see if I can push her off the edge of a rock. Attached to a rope. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll just go and like uh, maybe we'll go sooner than later. Then maybe yeah, we'll fucking no. schedule something and it's we'll easy. go. Out like I said, I got all the gear and I know where it's at. It's not because I've been moving. Shit's been stashed, but I know ah, I know where my see. climbing gear is. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> where all my ropes and all my my hardware is. So that's awesome. Well, you know what? Uh, we'll probably end up. I'll bring a bunch of cameras up and we'll shoot a little episode of me learning how to repel because I like doing like um, we're getting close to the end right okay. like they are getting know, almost, it? it's almost two hours yeah like really? it goes by like that I told you right it goes by like that <laughs> we'll start wrapping it up right here but yeah okay. um, what the fuck was I saying I was saying um, yeah so that's what we want to do right we want to teach people that they can go out and do whatever right, right. like it's not that hard and the I whole thing Jason and this yeah. is something I would like to stress that yeah. when, when we bring new people into the outdoors and stuff is that you need them before you teach them how to be there, yeah. you need to teach them how to respect it and yeah. to clean up. And 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 it's basically, you know, leave no footprint, you know, no trash, totally. put out your fires. I mean, just all the stuff you need to teach them that stuff before you get them out there so that they don't go when, when you're not around them. They don't go out there and just destroy shit so that when you want to go back, it's not. Fucking you know, trashed. Well, it's trash. They've shut it down because somebody did something stupid. You know, the, yeah. the rest of us pay for for people's stupidity, and it's our responsibility as the people that are out there already is to teach them the rules of the outdoors. Yeah, you know, and respect wildlife, respect nature, all that kind of stuff. Keep it clean. Yeah, you know, don't. We should do that on the video too. Like we should exactly. go through the whole thing and like give people a whole. Yeah, like I, exactly. I like that. I like that premise because I'm I'm that guy. Like I bring extra trash bags out, and there's fucking trash around the camp where I fucking pull up to. I'm going to clean it up before I even lay out a tent, and I always make sure. To collect anything well, I see, like in the forest, I mean, man. when you're doing that, also, you know, you have to bury your 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 you know feces and oh, dude, all we, that kind of. We brought we brought one of those little toilets. Oh, have you, you seen the camping that, yeah. toilet? Yes, I've got one. Yeah, and no, they got I, the yeah, bag and you, the powder in the bag. It doesn't even smell bad. Right? No, it's you got great. You got to have that. I've got the little Coleman one. Oh, do you? Yeah. No, yeah. but it's I I have it for mainly when I have 
Yeah, it's great for the, it's great for the it's girls, for, right? They, yeah, they, dude. Cause they don't they don't like hanging their ass over a log. No, <laughs> they got to squat to pee every single time. You know, they don't got they weren't built in with specialized hose that can just go anywhere. Right. right. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh no, it's fucking fantastic. I love it. Plus, you don't have to dig holes and mm-hmm. you, you, I fucking hate that when you see people that bring like regular toilet paper instead of the camping toilet paper out, right? right? Yeah, and then yeah. it's just it doesn't it doesn't degrade. It's just sitting out there covered in shit, flopping around the hiking trail. And it's right, like, God yeah. damn it, man, you guys got to fucking a dig a deeper hole than that you know and, <laughs> and b bring the right fucking toilet paper don't just grab the roll off your fucking toilet paper at your house right but this, these are all things that people don't think about when right. they go right yep. there's it doesn't occur to them oh, it's the just type paper. Of the t- like you know like if you're doing your dishes in the in the, in the stream or the river you got to yeah. have you know biodegradable soap you don't yeah. want to just use dawn no you got to get the special soap <laughs> right you know yeah. and they make they, they sell all that stuff at the, the outdoor stores yeah you know it's just learning you know, etiquette, I guess, is what you would call it, camping and camping outdoor, etiquette, camping and outdoor etiquette. Maybe we'll shoot two videos. We'll shoot a camping etiquette video too, and then we'll do like be, uh, tr- beginner training, like r- r- rock uh, rappelling and right. rock climbing and shit yeah, like that. No, I could do it right there where you're going to rappel. I can teach you. There's a, a a rock a rock climb there called Randall's Handles. I mean, when I was 14 years old, that's when we saw Randall up there. This guy named Randy Grandstaff. He died up there off on on a famous climb with a with a client. Um, but uh, he had been tra- training the Navy SEALs with this knot that is, it's still a little sketchy that it's a knot that you can repel where you can pull your rope, where it's not run through an anchor. Uh-huh. And it's a, a special knot that after that, but uh, the rope fail or the knot failed on him. Yeah. He did something and he fell to his death up there. But when I was 14 years old, there was nobody up there. And we happened to run into this guy climbing mountains and we're like wow this is cool and that's how we got into climbing and repelling and uh i've been doing it ever since that's awesome you know taking adventures to yosemite national park and i don't know if you've seen i've uh uh, what's that not free solo yeah free solo that's to me that's the baddest man that walks this planet at this point in time and he lives right here in las vegas alex honnold amazing person amazing are you met him or just like on the i have not met him yet um because he, he lives here. Who was it? I was talking to a guy, ran into him yeah. out climbing and little crags out here. And he just did, um, who, I don't know what that Diane, I think Diane, he just gave uh, a solar system to some charity and he, that's what he does is he does this charity stuff where he goes in and he gives them renewable energy. Oh, cool. You know? And, uh, it's he, he he's just a great person, but besides having the biggest balls on the planet, dude, seriously, to climb three thousand three hundred feet with no rope, yeah, that's insane. And it's just that's mind over matter. Yeah. Well, once does, you start going up, you just keep going up, right? Well, the whole thing is, is that, but once again, that comes into being able to control your mind so yeah. that your mind does not put you in jeopardy by doubting your ability to do this. Yeah. And that's where most humans fail in life is that they doubt their abilities. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you're, uh, it's like, like basketball or something like that, right? If you're trying to, if you're trying to think about putting the, the fucking ball through the hoop, you're going to get involved with the process. If you're just in the moment, right? And like uh, Taoism talks about this a lot where it's like, you're just, you're totally in the moment and you're letting your body do its thing you know you're just yeah. you're just observing it almost right. and well, it will it knows it lines it all up your body's great at that kind of shit when a ball flies through the fucking air you can calculate the trajectory of the ball right i mean you're you're not doing the math or anything like that <laughs> your brain's doing it and right. it's figuring it out real quick for you and it's like it's great at that shit but if you get involved and you try to think about where that fucking ball's gonna land it hits right? you right in the forehead it hits you right in the face <laughs> yeah you, it's just not gonna happen but yeah it's uh yeah you definitely gotta stay it's, out it's out a focus the, thing stay out of the way no that that, that that's, you know, for me, that's why I got into the rock climbing is that I was able, life went away. When you're on the side of a cliff and it's you, the rest of the world goes away and, and, and it becomes problem solving. Yeah. What's my next move? Oh, okay. This way. Oh, I'll balance this way. Put the foot this way. Oh, I got a little hold over here, you know, and it's all problem solving. But. Your focus is now. The rest of the world is gone. Yeah. Or you're going to fucking die. <laughs> well, yeah. There's no room for margin. Yeah. There's no margin for mistakes. Yeah. You know, there's just none, you know. So I've been rigging to 
my for my life since I was 14. So that's awesome. Well, you're gonna have to take me out, man. I look okay. forward to it. So I guess the next time we uh, we see you on the podcast, we'll have a video of you taking me rock climbing and Sounds showing me some stuff out in nature, man. I awesome. like it. Yeah. Well, Ricky, well, I really appreciate having you on the fuck podcast. Man. Thank you for having me, Jason. This has been great, great yeah. conversation. And uh, yeah, this has been uh, to the fullest of Jason well, Froberg. All right. Well, I was just going to say, next, oh, yeah. if, if you want to do another one, we can, we can be more specific on, we can pick topics and yeah. we can stay specific on those, on some of them, you know. Totally. Especially, I, I've got a good, I've got a good group of stories in the rock and roll industry that I've yeah. lived. <laughs> I don't, I know it. And uh, we could go through some of that stuff. I don't know. You know, it's whatever's interest, what your, uh, yeah. your, uh. Your subscribers are interested in, you know, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's just you know whatever whatever comes to mind. But we can, I would love to do a spe- specific podcast directly uh, focused on any topic you want to talk about, man. Okay, well, I'm we can super do that. This, this was kind of cool, just to to free, f- yeah, free flow it and see it's where it fun. see where it went. Yeah, <laughs> it went on all directions, man. Yes, I did, really enjoyed personally the, uh, the 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 philosophy conversation that we had for a while no, there. No, no. I love talking about philosophy. That's one of my favorite well, things to talk about. There's lots of books that I can point you to. I've, Please, I've I've read thousands of books. Have lots of them. Yeah, yeah. I'd be more than happy to give you some of them. Yeah, well, we can <laughs> we can trade some books, man. Okay. I, I yeah, no, because I have a lot of interesting books as well. Awesome. Yeah. So. All right. Well, well yeah. peace out. Peace out, indeed, man. It has been great, and I'm gonna show faded to black, man. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.